Good evening and uh, welcome to the Northampton City Council meeting of May 1st, 2014. I'm City Councilor Bill Dwight and I'm the President of the Council and I'll be presiding tonight. Uh, before we move into public comment and convening the meeting, um, I would like to welcome the delegation from Pakistan uh, seated in the chambers. The women you see here are, are all very accomplished and, and an august group who have distinguished themselves through their brave advocacy of progressive change. So they've come to observe our process, which makes me nervous as hell, uh, <laughs> and to see, see how we conduct polity, and we're honored to have you in attendance tonight. So thank you for coming. I also want to welcome Pam Powers. Now, I understand that you've already done that. She's already been baptized in fire, but I want, as, as I want to officially recognize her and, and I think if people would advance her some aspect of pity knowing that she's now further handicapped by me, whereas she didn't have to experience that last time. It was a slow immersion. Now, now, comes, now comes the real hellfire. So just but welcome, Pam. Thank you. And, and thanks. Pam got me in the building today. I couldn't figure out which door to get in. As folks have just discovered, we now enter through the full front door with handicap access, and I, sh I am sure that these doors will all be power assisted soon mm -hmm. and will conform to all ADA conform uh, requirements, and that's great news in only 25, 30 years in the making. Um, uh, now we come to public comment, and anyone is invited to speak on any topic. Uh, you're not limited to the items on the agenda tonight. Uh, we have some guidelines, though. Um, when you speak, please come up and state your name and your address for the record. Uh, also, please keep your remarks to under three minutes. There will be a timer, this very subtle timer here, that will count down the three minutes. And I ask you to wrap up your remarks before the time expires. If you're mid-sentence, we're certainly not going to stop you, but please don't move on to your next thought or page or chapter. Um, th also, we ask you to speak respectfully, and that's up to you as to what that is, but there will be, there is a threshold at which point you could be ruled out of order, but you're allowed to speak on any issue. It's, um, I, we prefer that they not be ad hominem attacks, but uh, the other thing is, is let's see, uh, the counselors can't respond to your um, your comments or your questions. So just so you know, if you deliver a question, we're not shutting you out. We're just not, by our rules, allowed to respond. So there will be rhetorical questions, which are certainly allowed. Um, and, you're, and, um, and the counselors are always available outside of the meeting. You can contact them at home on their phones or by their email or accost them on the street if it suits you. First up, Actually, there's some arrows. Oh, okay. Well, I, I, Karen Jarvis Vance is first up, so that solves that problem. Hello, Karen. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to address you. My name is Karen Jarvis Vance, and I am the Director of Health and Safety for the Northampton Public Schools, as well as the Program Director for the Northampton Prevention Coalition. I'm here tonight, along with some of my school nursing staff, to receive a proclamation designating May 7 as School Nurses Day in Northampton. A few quick facts about your school nurses. All are registered nurses and also hold educator licenses from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. All are at minimum baccalaureate prepared, and most are either master's prepared, currently in graduate school, and or have a national certification. School nurses are highly educated nursing professionals. Last year in our six schools, we had neither, nearly 31,000 school health office visits from students and staff. 78% of our total student body visited the nurse at least once during the school year. Of the students seen, we returned over 94% of them back to class ready to learn. In comparison, studies have found that in schools without school nursing services full time, the average return to class rate is just 75%. Additionally, research has shown that school nurses save principals almost an hour a day, teachers almost 20 minutes a day, and clerical staff more than 45 minutes a day. School nurses increase time on learning and save districts money. Last year, we gave almost 10,000 doses of medication, performed a myriad of other nursing procedures, including diabetic care, tube feedings, nebulizer treatments, and blood pressure monitoring. 1,500 students were screened for vision and hearing problems, and another 900 were screened for scoliosis. 
As of last year, 42% of our total student body had a health issue that required some kind of monitoring or care by the school nurse. School nurses are essential to the good care of children with chronic illnesses and disorders. In Northampton last year, we sent someone out of a building in an ambulance 15 times and also gave three EpiPens, two of which were to people without a previously diagnosed allergy. School nurses save lives. So tonight I'd like to recognize the nurses who have joined me tonight here to receive this proclamation. I have Karen Schiaffo from JFK Middle School, Lisa Saffron from Ryan Road Elementary School, Deb Raniak, who is our traveling nurse, Kathy McCarthy from Leeds School, Ellen Hirschberg from Northampton High School, and actually in the back, Rebecca Stort, who is one of our substitute nurses. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, uh, now there's these arrows here, so I, I'm assuming Patty, you're next, Patty Shaughnessy. Okay. We wanted to have a good process. With okay, the well, I always value process. <laughs> I'm Patty Shaughnessy, the director at the Northampton Council on Aging and Senior Center. Last meeting I was here along with Crystal Cody, our assistant director, to uh, talk about National Volunteer Month. On Saturday of last week, we held our volunteer recognition breakfast where we honored our 140 volunteers. And traditionally, we always present the city, um, and usually it's the mayor that we present our check to for the uh, volunteer hours and what the dollar um, amount, what that equals to according to Massachusetts. Each state has a dollar amount of what a volunteer is worth and in Massachusetts it's $27.43 um, per person. So with all of the volunteer hours that our volunteers put in in 2013, 12,490.47. We haven't figured out where the 47 came from, but um, for a total amount of $330,494.44. So this is what volunteers did for us at the Senior Center, which in turn is what helps the city of Northampton um, with um, financial needs. Uh, we have these wonderful volunteers who um, continue to do a lot of terrific and marvelous work for us. So I would like to again present this check to the mayor who was very gracious and came to our um, breakfast Saturday. And so for a second time, though it's only worth its value one time. Well, um, <laughs> the bank was already closed on Saturday, so I couldn't get there to cash it. So, so. We, we are very proud to present this to the city. So thank you very much for thank accepting you. it. Thank you thank so you. much for all your work. Thank and thanks you. to all the volunteers. All right, Crystal, you're up next <laughs> in, in order of progression. You don't have a foam core check. <laughs> Hello, my name is Crystal Cody Stowes. I'm the assistant director and volunteer coordinator for the Northampton Senior Center. I'm here with the volunteer who logged in the most hours for 2013, an impressive 668 hours and 20 minutes, which is worth about $18,238.78. Um, Mary has been volunteering with the Senior Center for a very long time. She um, became more active when um, I was promoted to assistant director because I begged her. No, <laughs> no not really, because she, because she wanted to, to help me out with my transition and volunteer scheduling. So she stepped up to the plate to help me out and I'm ever so gracious for her and she'd like to say a few things. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say that I enjoy volunteering at the Senior Center. I hope I make a difference in people's lives. I don't know if I do. I think sometimes I get more out of it than I give, but I'll keep doing so. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jasper Lapiensky. We can't comment, but we can clap. <laughs> Jasper, you're up next. Did you get excited there for a second? Thought that was for you? <laughs> No, I was going to suggest that you say my name again just for uh, clarity. <laughs> Jasper Lapiensky, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes, my name is Jasper Lapiensky, and I live at 226 South Street. Uh, what I am about to say uh, may be shocking to many of you, although one of you knows. I'm just going to read 
the documents I have in front of me. These are not remarks I've prepared. These are documents. Um, this is a Massachusetts public records request that I made on April 9th of the Pioneer Valley Transit Authority. <coughs> Dear PVTA records custodian, in accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 66, Section 10, I, Jasper Lapiensky, citizen of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, request the immediate release of the following information. PVTA's Guide to Professional Conduct for Drivers, Supervisors, Station Attendants, Office Staff, and Administrators, the Professional Conduct Guides given to employees of operational contractors of PVTA. I look forward to your reply within 10 days as pursuant to Mass General Law. Sincerely, Jasper Lapiensky. And this is their response. And I'm quoting. PVTA does not have a document for the PVTA employees that you requested. If you would be so kind as to take one and pass, I want everyone, including the clerk, to have one. I said take one and pass in case the TV couldn't hear me. Um, at the beginning of the ses this session of the council, it was remarked that the Committee on Investigations probably wouldn't have to meet very often, and so it wasn't super important to pick a chairman right away. Because the city of Northampton contributes significantly to the pool of money that the Pioneer Valley Transit Authority uses, I believe it is within this, the jurisdiction of the Committee on Investigations to investigate why a Massachusetts state government agency does not have an employment policy. And I uh, hereby request that the Committee on Investigations does meet and chooses to investigate this matter to the extent that they are legally permitted to do. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Joyce Sabin, Russia, please. Hi, I'm Joyce Sabin, Russia, 67 West Street, and I'm also the founder of Never Another Death. Um, I'm speaking tonight in regards to hopefully our coming soon training of our Northampton police in nasal naloxone to reverse opiate overdoses and to save lives. Um, last night when I was watching the news, I saw that there was another overdose in City Hall bathroom and they were successfully able to reverse the overdose when the EMTs arrived. I do a lot of work in outreach to prevent overdose. Nasal naloxone saves lives. When you come across someone who has died from an opiate overdose, you have the opportunity to bring them back to life. There's a lot of controversy throughout the state of Massachusetts since the governor has deemed that first responders, police, and fire should be trained. A close friend of ours, Liz Wynott, does the training. She travels to cities in Massachusetts, to facilities, and trains people. Any citizen in Massachusetts can learn to administer naloxone with training. It's about a five-minute training. Then you're allowed to carry it. I carry it. Um, for some of you don't know, my son Matthew passed from an opiate overdose in the year 2000. Fourteen years ago, people were overdosing in City Hall bathroom. A young man that we knew very well overdosed in the Haymarket bathroom. I feel that public bathrooms should be locked. You should have to receive a key, and someone should pay attention to how long that person has had the key. I really feel strongly that Northampton police should be trained as soon as possible in administering naloxone. So thank you for letting me speak. Thank you, George. That's all we have signed up. Um, anyone else interested in speaking at this moment? Next week. <laughs> the, we will uh, then. I'm going to ask the clerk to call the roll. We're going to convene in public session. Here. 
<coughs> Present. Here. Yes. Present. Here. 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 We have a quorum and we are convened. So, let's get to work. Um, first up, we have no, we have no scheduled uh, public hearing, so first up we'll have the mayor um, has some proclamations, as you may have heard alluded to in, in public comment, Your Honor. Good evening, uh, members of the City Council. I do indeed have uh, two proclamations that I'd like to issue this evening. Um, oh, sorry, I have a pen here. Um, is this yours? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the first one is uh, entitled Older Americans Month, uh, Safe Today, Healthy Tomorrow, May 2014. Whereas older adults are entitled to live healthier lives through a combination of independence and choice, and whereas we must recognize, however, that older adults are at a higher risk of unintentional injury and even death than the rest of the population, and thus need the assistance of their communities to thrive, and whereas we as a community can provide opportunities to enrich the lives of individuals, young and old, by emphasizing the need to take action to safeguard themselves from unintentional injuries where they live, work, and socialize, providing information on avoiding leading causes of injury for older adults, falls, motor vehicle related incidents, suffocation, medication overdose, and fire, and helping older adults take control of their safety and well-being. Whereas the City of Northampton always has supported its older adults with the establishment of the Northampton Council on Aging and Senior Center, whose mission is to offer programs, activities, services, and opportunities to safeguard and enhance the everyday needs of our community's older adults, now, therefore, I, Mayor David Narkowitz, do hereby proclaim May 2014 to be Older Americans Month in the city of Northampton. I urge everyone to acknowledge older adults and the people who serve and support them as powerful and vital individuals who greatly contribute to our city. In witness whereof, I have set my hand and imprinted the seal of the city of Northampton this May 1st, 2014. And I believe we have the uh, <coughs> Director of the Council on Aging and the Senior Center, uh, Patty Shaughnessy, here, and I'd like to present this to you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. And I, can I speak? Sure. Can yeah, I absolutely. Something? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I had passed out a um, brochure that we put together for the month of May, which is Older Americans Month. Um, and these are a lot of special workshops and uh, programs that we put on besides what we put on normally um, during the, the week, the month. Um, and two things I'd just like to point out on um, May 18th from one to three, we have an open house at the Senior Center and we welcome the community. We welcome everyone to come see who we are, what we do. We'll have displays, entertainment, light refreshments, and um, the staff will be there for people to meet. And then our annual, this is our 12th, Health and Safety Fair on May 22nd. It's a wonderful event for our community. It brings over 63 vendors to the Senior Center, so we have a lot of information under one roof for our seniors and our community members. So everyone's invited to join, and I hope uh, there are a number of people coming to all of our events. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, and as was alluded to in the public comment, uh, the second proclamation I have the privilege of, of uh, uh, reading this evening is National School Nurse Day, which is May 7, 2014. Whereas children are the future and by investing in them today we are ensuring our world for tomorrow, and whereas all students have a right to have their health needs safely met while in the school setting, and whereas children today face far more complex and life-threatening health problems requiring care in school, and whereas school nurses have served a critical role in improving public health and in ensuring students' academic success for more than 100 years, and whereas school nurses are professional nurses that advance the well-being, academic success, and lifelong achievements of all students by serving on the front lines and providing a critical safety net for our nation's most fragile children. And whereas school nurses act as a liaison to the school community, 
parents, and healthcare providers on behalf of children's health by promoting wellness and improving healthy outcomes for our nation's children. And whereas school nurses support the health and educational success of children and youth by providing access to care when children's cognitive development is at its peak, and whereas school nurses are members of school-based mental health teams, and whereas school nurses understand the link between health and learning and are in a position to make a positive difference for children every day, now, therefore, I, David J. Narkowitz, Mayor of the City of Northampton, do hereby proclaim May 7, 2014, as National School <coughs> Nurse Day. Let us acknowledge the accomplishments of school nurses and their efforts to meet the needs of today's students by improving the delivery of health care in our schools. Let us thank them for contributing to local communities by helping students stay healthy, in school, and ready to learn, and by helping to keep parents and guardians at work. In witness whereof, I have set my hand and imprinted the seal of the city of Northampton this first day of May in the year 2014. And I'd ask Karen uh, Jarvis Vance to come up, uh, and I'd like to present this to you. And I'd like, actually, all of your colleagues to stand up so we can give them all a round of applause. Like Karen, you're welcome no, to, to I already right. spoke. <laughs> well said. Thank you very much. Thank well, you. And thank you all. Uh, your, your service, I'm glad that we have an opportunity to commend it and note it. Um, we don't get it at the school much, and you, we, we'd just annoy you if we did. So, but it, it, You could check your blood pressure, though. <laughs> it's interesting, these two proclamations come back to back. I mean, I, I'm starting to feel really enfeebled right now. <laughs> Thank you all for your good work. Thank you work. very much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Your Honor, you have, um, under your presentation, you have. Uh, the, yes. The uh, police the, chief has shown up, and so you. Exactly. So uh, uh, this evening, um, we uh, we have a presentation that we thought would be great to do here in City Council chambers before the City Council, uh, which is a presentation of the 2013 Community Policing Award by the New England Association of Police Chiefs. And uh, Chief Sink, would you give me a minute? I didn't want to create a disturbance. Okay. Disorderly conduct and take away from everybody else's great resolutions. Okay. But if I bring my approval, okay. Uh, they're going to coming in with the instruments. They're going to come in. Okay. <laughs> That's it's quite all right. We have no we don't have a lot of chairs right left, up. so that's fine. So uh, bring them on. Would you introduce Chief Johnston from the Springfield sure. Vermont Police? Yeah. So we're, we're pleased to be joined by uh, Chief Steve Johnston, who is uh, from the New England Association of uh, Police Chiefs. He's from Springfield, Vermont, and he's going to be making the presentation this evening. So Chief. <clears throat> Just to uh, brief you a little bit how this goes about, um, we put out through the New England Chiefs of Police Association uh, Community Policing, and they have to apply for this. And um, we had a number of applications. We go from a large department, a middle-sized department, and a small department. So everybody has an opportunity to do that. And I'll have to say the middle-sized department, which <clears throat> Northampton is, uh, qualifies for, um, was uh, very competitive, and uh, it was a very difficult decision on, on the committee's part in order to uh, decide who should receive the award. And <clears throat> what basically happened is uh, Northampton ended up receiving the award. And let me just open this up. Chief, if you want to. Traveled a long way, so you packed it well. I didn't pack this. I fact, I wouldn't even open it up. So, and if you see what the, the award is, you're going to know why it's packed up in the glass or packing. Okay, this. <clears throat> thank you. 
Okay, on behalf of New England Chiefs of Police, uh, I'd like to present this award uh, for the community policing uh, for the Hampton uh, Police Department. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Chief. Thank you so much. Peter. Chief, you have um, some comments about this, I hope. I do. Um, I mean, first of all, it's almost, it's not an Academy Award, but it's an award. So there, there's some thanks I have to pass out. Um, and, and this is a recognition from New, New England Association of Chiefs of Police that, you know, goes beyond the, the things you read about in the newspaper, the, the typical cops and robbers stuff. This is all the things that our people your people, my people, do behind the scenes on a daily basis. It often goes unrecognized. Um, but it's also a partnership with our community. There's over 30 sustaining members, both public and private organizations, that meet daily, not daily, but regularly with us to deal with issues. Um, and again, the, the thanks goes out to all the civilian and sworn people that we have working for our agency. Um, they go out every day and they deal with these issues on a one-to-one -one basis with sensitivity and empathy, but also very professionally. Uh, we, we train them, we educate them, and our, our mission and our goal is just to take action in a way that helps citizens that doesn't often just result in a legal action as a police officer. It's, it's dealing with the various different entities that we have to deal with. So a tremendous amount of thanks for our sworn personnel, our civilian personnel, and the supervisors, many of them that are here tonight, that stand behind it and make sure this happens. The award recognizes our, our work, our, our proactive work in domestic violence, in assisting the mentally ill with our mental health first aid, our critical, critical incident response team, um, the work that we do with traumatic brain injuries for the returning veterans, of which we have a pretty large population here in Northampton, traffic and pedestrian safety issues, uh, we're very proactive in that, uh, schools and juvenile safety. Um, certain certain nurse that accepted award here will say that we work very well with the Spiffy Group and with the schools to identify issues in the schools for juvenile safety, um, alcohol and drug abuse. Um, you heard Ms. Rescue had a comment about how her hope is for us to do the nasal Narcan and we are about to do that in about a week with our training. It was a project I looked at some time ago, examined the uh, uh, pilot project with the public health and then since then there's been a wave of support from the legislature and a change of regulations. Um, and also our general outreach um, to build and strengthen community relationships. Um, it's not just me, it's just not my supervisors, it's the patrol officers that go out there on a daily basis and do it because they're proud of the department and they do a really good job. But the biggest thanks, <clears throat> and I told her she might have to speak, is to Captain Casper. She proposed that we apply for this grant. I looked at it, it was onerous. I'm like, are you serious? This is really huge, this is a lot of work. And she said, I'll take it on, and she took it on. She filled out the 40 plus pages, single spaced, great detail, great statistics, and in the end, the entire group of the New England Association of Chiefs Police decided that we were the middle sized agency, 30,000 to 50,000 population that deserved this. So, really, the thanks goes to her. And, um, Captain, you got to look at this? Absolutely. There's a lot of typing, Chief. A lot of typing. <laughs> but Jody did such a great job, and um, it, it's really her, all her work that made this come to fruition. So, you want to say anything? <laughs> yeah. Sure. Uh, in brief, uh, all I would say is, you know, the reason that I was motivated to put us in for this award is because I really have a passion about our police department and the way that we interact with the community and the way that people interact with us. And it's something that certainly not any one of us could say, I'm the community policing officer, this is what I do. Uh, this goes from every different corner of the department, civilian and uh, you know, sworn personnel. We work really hard to ensure that we provide the best level of service that we can. And we recognize that there's many different ways to do that and that some of those ways are the enforcement that you think of probably more traditionally when you're watching cops or whatever. <laughs> but for us, we recognize that there's a very strong and important element on the front end uh, where we work with a lot of our stakeholders to try to uh, avoid people getting into trouble and um, try to work in close partnerships with the community. So it was that 
uh, understanding and appreciation for all that everyone does at our department that drove me to type 40 pages of uh, <laughs> statistical information about our agency and apply for this. So I'm very proud of our agency for receiving this and thank you for letting us present to you. And as a plug, uh, we have our Citizen Police Academy as one of our many outreach programs and you're all always invited. Everyone here, everyone in this room is invited. It's something that we run every year and we learn more about you and your perspectives and what you expect of us and what you think we can do. And I will tell you what we really can and can't do. <laughs> but you're invited to do that. We run it in the winter, and we'd love to see anyone that, that wants to be there come and participate. It's a great program for us and uh, for the people that take it. So thank you so much. Thank you, Captain. Take, take, take that. So, I don't so indeed, <coughs> indeed, I'm accepting on behalf of the police department, thanks to the New England Association of Chiefs of Police, but it's really I'm accepting it because of the city of Northampton, you should be so proud of the people that you have serving you and so many things they do that off, often go unrecognized and this is a recognition of that. So thank you very much. Thank you. I, the, I should just say that the ethos of community policing as opposed to reactive policing, I think for the public who might not understand that's actually a modality of policing that is proactive, that's prophylactic, that actually is engaging the community to anticipate problems to prevent problems, as uh, Captain Casper said, and it's it's ultimately less showing up in dramatic moments with blue lights flashing, and more productive, and has greater value on the ground and for the members of the community, because it's it's actually uh, as opposed to making the police show up at times of crises. It's crisis prevention, and it's something that. We value, and we used to value much more as a nation, a little less so now, at least funding-wise, uh, and I hope that we eventually come around to recognizing the value that it has for all of us in the community, and I'm glad that Northampton gets to be represented as a paragon. So thank you very much for your work towards that goal. You're welcome. Thanks. That was great. Well, I was <laughs> And, and, and no music to walk you out, I'm sorry. That's <laughs> um, we have no other presentations or proclamations tonight uh, or licenses and petitions, so we come up to the point of reports of committee. Move to approve. I'm sorry, you're asking to approve them as a whole? Yes. Take them in the, as a yes. Group? yes. Second. Second. Any discussion on the minutes? The, and by the way, it's the Minister for Public Safety, the Committee on Economic and Community Development, Housing and Land Use minutes, uh, the Committee on Rules, Orders, Appointments and Ordinance minutes, uh, Transportation and Parking Commission minutes, and the Committee on Social Service, Veterans, Culture and Recreation minutes of uh, March 19th. I move those as a group. And they've been moved we as did. a group oh, and, then. and seconded. So any discussion on any of these? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Are there any abstentions? Okay. That brings us up to, and actually the police just left, but this is up to uh, an appointment of uh, Special Police Officer Daniel Soto. I'll move, I'll move the, the appointment. Second it. Motions are made and seconded. Um, the chief, Mr. Batty was just here, he just <laughs> left, um, as, as Danny, Danny Soto actually served as a police officer in this department for quite a while and then went on to become a state trooper and now he wants to come home and back to his old stomping grounds and do beat patrol downtown. And I can't think of a better candidate and I can't think of a better opportunity to. Oh, here he is actually. That's Chief, uh, Chief, we're doing Danny Soto and I wonder if you could just take a moment to speak to his application as a special police officer. Uh, oh, normally um, annually when we identify this, the special police officers that are working that have com uh, completed their training, there's a whole new level of higher training as a result of accreditation that people need to accomplish. Um, so the numbers of special officers have shrunk. So I think in January you voted um, the appointment of seven, I'm trying to recall exactly. Uh, but since that time, Danny Soto, who used to work for us for several years in the police department, um, Went to work for the state police, immediately got put in an investigatory unit, had a, a long career, and just retired April 30th um, from the state police. And prior to his retirement, he says, I just want to come back, you know, keep, keep my hand in police work, you know, walk downtown, just be the type of person that he is. 
Um, so I, I couldn't turn him down. Danny is a great guy. Um, he's older. He's more mature. He's experienced. He's the type of uh, role model that I, I need in the agency, even though he's going to be here part time. He's a very effervescent person, and he has the core belief that he left here with about how important neighborhood policing is, not just community policing. Um, and he wants to come back and do that after having a very successful career in the state police. So he's gone through probably 20 some odd days of training on his own time, to get up to our policies. He did his deep yesterday, I saw him in the building. Um, and we're getting him all set to come back and, and, and work a couple, three shifts. And you'll see him on Main Street. He, he's a great guy. I was sorry to lose him, but I'm so happy to have him come back. And it's it's just an example about how he understands what a great department this is, and you know, so much good about Northampton. So, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's what I said. I was <laughs> outside. Yeah, it's, it's okay. So the the motion's been made, and uh, and second, is there any further discussion or any questions about it? Yeah. Then all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. We got, we got one other beat officer now. <laughs> it's a, half a beat officer. Half a, half a beat officer, right. Uh, <coughs> it's at this point that we're going to go into recess for the finance committee, and I will figuratively pass the gavel over to the chair of the finance committee. But I'm not a member of. Oh no, I'm sorry. This is for finance. finance. It's okay. So you've got, <laughs> you've got <laughs> Councilor Adams, Councilor Laparge, <laughs> Councilor Shara. You're not on my board here. Honorary member. That's okay. Honorary finance. Here. No, still. Excellent. So our first order tonight is upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkowitz and the Conservation Commission, whereas the Open Space and Recreation Plan for 2011 to 2018 recommends expanding upon open space land preservation in the sawmill hills and whereas the owners of 50 plus acres on Sylvester Road abutting the sawmill hills conservation area on two sides and providing dramatically improved trail access uh, have agreed to sell their property to the city and whereas the Conservation Commission identified this area as one of their top two acquisition priorities in the entire city and whereas the Massachusetts land grant provides up to 64 percent reimbursement for acquisition of certain conservation areas and is a reimbursement program which requires the city to demonstrate that it has all the funds necessary to acquire conservation properties prior to state reimbursement. Um, and order that the Conservation Commission is authorized to purchase or otherwise acquire for conservation and passive recreation purposes as provided by Mass General Law Chapter 40 subsection 8C any fee easement or conservation restriction as defined in Mass General Law Chapter 184 subsection 31 or any interest in the above land and any immediate adjoining land that the City Council hereby accepts such conservation restriction that the Conservation Commission is authorized to grant conservation restrictions on any land so acquired and that the Conservation Commission is authorized to contract for and expend any federal, state, or other aid available for this project, including any grant from the Division of Conservation Services, Services of the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs under the Land Safe Self-Health Act, Mass General Law 132A, subsection 11. Further, that $264,200 or $264, is appropriated for such acquisition and that to meet this appropriation the treasurer with the approval of the mayor is authorized to borrow the two hundred and sixty four thousand two hundred dollars under mass general laws uh, section 44 subsection 7 section 3 and that the conservation commission is authorized to contract for any federal state or other aid available for this project including any grant from the division of conservation services of the Executive Office of Environmental Affairs under the Land Self-Help Act, Chapter 132A, Subsection 11 of the General Laws. Further, that any grants, donations, or sales shall be used to reimburse open space funds used for this purpose. Do we have a motion in finance? So moved. Motion. 
Second. All right. And I believe Mr. Fiden is here if we want to recognize, recognize Mr. Fiden knows something about this. So we show all in favor of recognizing? Aye. Right. Mr. Fiden. Um, so two issues. One is um, this is bond authority, which we're never going to use. So we do this about once a year. We're, we're much more likely to get state grants so we can prove up front that we can do, a, you know, we can finance everything and reimburse everything. So about once a year we come before you, we get finance authority for bonding, and then a year later we come back and have you revoke that, that authority. But that lets us get these grants that are there. So the ultimate funding for this property, we hope, and we're applying for a lot of grants, but ideally would be 64% from a state grant, um, some amount of money from CPA, and some amount of money from fundraising. Um, and so there'd be no general fund money and no, no harm for it. Um, the parcel itself is a really gorgeous parcel of land in the Salmon Hills. Um, some of you may remember that about a year and a half ago, you authorized us to buy some land from, from the Samanskis. That was the first time ever that the Salmon Hills went from, it used to go from Rhine Road up to the ridge. It now goes all the way out to Sylvester Road. So that was the first sort of breakthrough parcel. The northerly edge of that property is a stream. It's actually the highest elevation stream in the Salma Hills, so ecologically very important. The property just north of that is this property we're talking about here. So you sort of assume that most wildlife follows streams. So we got half the story last time. This is the other half the story. The other benefit for this property is even though we now have front engine on Sylvester Road and we could build a trail, which is part of why we bought the other property, to go through the Szymanski property, we'd have to build a small bridge across a, a, a stream in a wetlands. This property already has a logging road on it, so it would save us money and save us time. We wouldn't have to build any trails whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, I just have a question for Councilor Barf, because this is in your ward, and do you have some comments on well, this? Well, it important. was in my ward for a long time. It is okay. now part of Ward 7, but um, I know the owners, and the property is just unbelievable. And I have to agree with conservation. I think it's top, top priority on the list. The connections are there. The wildlife is just unbelievable. I mean, I'm talking about moose. Everything you can think of is there. And for us to say no on this property would be the wrong way to go because the two parcels actually connect of what our wish was for a long time is to be able to hopefully someday to be able to purchase that property. I just had talked with the owners this year, which I had called Wayne, in regards that he had great concerns because of the property not being surveyed by the city and that people were coming onto the property. And by Wayne going over there to talk with them, this is what has occurred, what they have agreed to go ahead and sell the 50 plus acres. And I think it's one of the greatest moves that we could make in Ward 6. I mean, the connections are there. And even though I know we probably could, they could, as owners, put three houses on that property. This is private property and I want people to understand this. This is the owners who are saying, we want to make it conservation. Because sometimes people think that we're just buying land, it's private land, that these people are willing to go ahead and sit down with the city, sit down with our planning department to say, this is what we'd like, this is the restrictions that we would like on our property. I think it's the right way to go. We can't go wrong. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Feinholz? Oh, Council. Uh, actually, first of all, Wayne, I, the 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 map you gave us is I, I see a trapezoid in the middle of gray dots that doesn't necessarily <laughs> indicate that this actually has any connection to the planet. But I don't if, if I'm I'm looking at a Google Earth image now, um, and I'm just trying to get a sense of where this is. So the clearest landmark is Sylvester Road's going more or less due north-south, and then it starts making a curve to the west, and sort of right in that curve is where the property is. That nasty curve. De depending on how good your map is, you Got actually it. see where the stream crosses the road. Got it. Okay. Yes, yes, I now do see it. So it's not its proximity to Ryan Road is not really proximate to Ryan Road at all. No, but that's what makes it so spectacular. This now lets you walk from Ryan Road all the way to this parcel. It's a long way across, but a lot of people like having that, that long-distance walk. 
Can, and, I, and I want to ask, and this is a larger philosophical question, and, and Councilor Labarge referred to it as well, is that uh, we hear frequently from citizens that you know, we understand that we're trying to maintain a fine balance of land preservation at the same time um, coping with funding limitations. And I'm trying to determine where the fulcrum is in that fine balance, where when we are essentially, as Councilor Bart said, they have the possibility of developing three houses on this property, which some would say, uh, as you would advocate, this, this is great that we preserve this property from that type of development. But others would say those are three tax prop taxable properties that would generate revenue for the city. And could you speak to that point? Sure. Um, a few different ways to look at it. One is some parcels of land g getting developed for homes from a straight financial standpoint makes the city money, and some were more likely to lose money. So see, if you remember, many times we buy land, we work with the seller and carve off some building lots. So the whole Bean Allard farm, we preserve that land. We worked with them to carve off three building lots because those were places where the, all the infrastructure was in place and where we would get three new homes and not have to extend roads, not expend services. We've done that a number of times. There's a property on Ryan Road just before Sylvester Road where we worked with the seller to carve off two lots, which are now both duplexes, so four units. So certainly many times we want to do that. It's not, it doesn't make sense for all properties, sometimes for ecological reasons. It could be the wrong place, sometimes for financial reasons for the city. So this particular one, for both ecological reasons and financial reasons, it didn't seem like the right place to carve that. The other thing, of course, is the seller, who's been absolutely wonderful to work with, the land's currently in Chapter 61B, so we're not losing any significant tax money. The seller very much doesn't want to have homes nearby. Um, and so if we didn't buy this land, I don't think we'd be getting the homes anyway, at least for their, their tenancy on the property. Um, and so partially we're working with them. We would have been fine. You know, we, we worked with, when we first met with them. We said, we're fine buying all the land. We're fine carving off building lots for you to keep. Um, and definitely their preference was for it not to be developed sort of relevant to this question and action that this council took last term, um, changing our zoning ordinance to permit more infill and smaller lots in town. I mean, it's some of that philosophy to say, if we're going to preserve land on the outskirts of the city that's, that's in a more natural state and allow more infill where there is public transportation, where there's utilities in the roads already, let the infill happen and not cut down on the potential for some growth, but preserve the more natural setting where the, you know, there is no sewer out there. There is no water. I don't think there's water in front of this one. That's correct. So it, it preserves those properties, but last session we let from more infill occur with a zoning change. So it kind of works hand in hand. And when it's in chapter, you're not necessarily uh, losing really any major tax revenue. And because it's in chapter, if they submit a development plan, they'd have to run it by us anyway. So, I mean, it, it I, I, I mean, also on the same point, we do track pretty carefully what number of lots that are on the market. Um, and because part of our goal, and one of our stated missions, is making sure that in both acquisitions and zoning, we're not making land scarce enough that we're, we're making land prices more expensive. And there are a lot of lots on the market now, both sort of subdivisions like Emerson Way and the Ridge, and then individual lots along roads. Um, so there's a lot of inventory that we're not taking away from opportunities for people to build. So any other questions for Mr. Clyde in, in finance? Any more questions on this issue in finance? Then uh, all in favor of a positive recommendation? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain? Great. We have another order. That's a big one. I think we did the big one already. Yes. So I, I know. I was being facetious. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and financially, it's not as big either. <laughs> 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 That's what I meant. <laughs> of Mayor David J. Narco, it's ordered that the City Council approve the expenditure from the Commission on Disabilities Fund established under Chapter 40, Section 22G, and fund funded by handicapped parking violations <coughs> to exceed $100 for the purchase of a banner to be used for public events in which the Commission on Disabilities participates. Do we have a motion to finance? Some. Some. All right. And the Mayor's here to speak on it. The Commission on Disabilities wants to buy a banner. <laughs> um, and so the fund that we set up to allow them to collect fines allows them to collect the fines, but this, re this is at a request to expend some of those funds. So uh, that's what the request is for. And I believe the counselor who serves on that commission can probably give you Councilor Barge, you want, I'm sure we'll speak to this. Thank you. Um, the banner is two and a half by four, and 
There was great concerns from many of the commissioners of like the health and safety fair that's coming forth that they will be able to have a banner to place on the table and people would know who they are and what they're all about. Um, it is going to be ordered at Paradise Copies and I think the price on it was like $80, $80. and then they want to get the, the work to go across it so they would like to be in the parades also which I thought was a great idea. So it's just about $100. And so hopefully I've talked with Susan and Patty that we could kind of like wait till after we do the budget hearings and change the policy of coming in every time for $100, which is ridiculous if we could just work out what we think we might be able to spend within a year and then come in with what we're going to spend each item. Yeah. We can also structure it like we've done with some other right. of these revolving funds where there's a certain cap and that I'm allowed to authorize the spending up to a certain cap and then anything larger has to come to the city council. So we may be able to do that. I agree with you, probably $100 is maybe doesn't need to come back to the city council. So. And we were hoping that it would be ready for the Pride Parade, but it's not. So but that's okay. We've got many other parades. We have to reauthorize that this revolving fund every year, so yes. there'll be an order for it in the budget. So we may incorporate some a language to address that issue. Yeah, we thought we would do that like after the budget hearings. So, any other questions in finance? Or all, right. all in favor? Both Aye. A positive recommendation. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Very good. And these, uh, the next, I think, are coming from the capital plan, which we'll start hearing about. Upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkers, whereas the city appropriated $75,000 for resurfacing of the Northampton High School outdoor track in 2012, and whereas there is a balance of funds remaining from that project of $6,691.03, and it is the mayor's intention to reprogram this remaining balance for other capital needs, whereas there is an identified need to provide additional security measures at Northampton High School, or to that $6,691.03 be reprogrammed from the balance of the Northampton High School track resurfacing project to be used for the upgrading of security access hardware at the front entrance of the school. And I don't know, do you want to speak to this? Or Mr. Mr. Pomerantz is here, so I may, um, may have him talk about several of these projects that are within his bailiwick. But this is, as you know, it's, it's a theme we have capital projects where we complete them there's a small amount of money left and we and we try to reprogram them to like projects so if you'd recognize mr. Sure. Pomerantz, a motion he can talk mr. Pomerantz make a motion second, second. all in favor Aye. good evening everybody um, we do have some money left over from the track resurfacing that was done in 2012 and this money along with about three thousand dollars from the high school building fund will be used to install a security access system at the front door of the high school uh, this is the only building that still remains uh, with a, no security at the front of the building. Uh, all the other buildings were done in 2007 and 2008. Um, both the police department and the current uh, interim superintendent uh, marked this as a high priority, something they'd like to see done. Uh, the intent would be to do it in the next two weeks and uh, basically do training uh, through the high school principal and the students and the administrative and office staffs to get the system up and running and in use by the end of this semester. Uh, so when everybody returns in September, it's sort of old hat already, and everybody knows what it's all about. This project is being done in conjunction with other recent improvements we've made at the high school. We've upgraded and expanded the camera system. Uh, last summer, uh, we're uh, locking with better alarms some of the perimeter doors. Uh, additional cameras in the hallways all at the request of the high school administrators but locking the front doors uh, is a big step forward as far as improving the overall uh, boundary security at the high school any questions for mr. Pomerantz no no right. then uh, in finance all in favor of positive recommendation aye. 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 aye any opposed thank you And uh, Mr. Pomerantz is going to stick with us because there's a bunch of stuff, stuff from the capital plan. 
Upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Nockwitz, the City Council appropriates $85,000 for the replacement of fire escapes at the Academy of Music as part of the FY 2012 capital plan, whereas the original estimate was preliminary and once design and engineering was completed and bids solicited, the true cost of the project was determined to be higher and additional funds are needed because the total project cost is $202,200, whereas uh, there is an identified time frame in which the work has to be scheduled to minimize disruption of programming at the Academy of Music. Therefore, order that $117,200 from the FY14 General Fund undesignated fund balance be appropriated to the Academy of Music Fire Escape Repair and Replacement Project. Do we have a motion? Make so a motion. Second. Second. All right. Um, Mr. Valerius. Thank you. So we have a situation where the four original fire escapes on the Academy need to be removed and replaced. Um, one of them was removed uh, the winter of uh, 2012. We did emergency repairs on the other three. And the building commissioner and our department has been monitoring, along with an outside engineer, the status of those repairs and the overall status of the fire escapes. They need to be removed and replaced. They've been repaired numerous times since they were, these are the original units. Uh, we've already done the engineering and the design and bid the project. Uh, the time frame that we're trying to work within, this is why we're asking for the money to be appropriated now so we can actually start the shop drawings, is that the academy is going to be closed all of July and August uh, for interior renovations using state grants that they've obtained. Um, so there's no activity except construction during the summer months, and it'll take us about till the end of August to get this work done but we'd like to proceed. Uh, again, the bids are already in. We've picked the contractor. We want to start the uh, shop drawings and the submittals now, and that's what this is all about, so we can move forward. Questions? No. Uh, yes, Councilor. I'm um, just curious, on, on the last order, I see that two readings were requested, but is there any urgency to possibly do two readings on this issue, since you have a time frame that is imminent? I would like to do two on this, um, just so we can proceed with the shop drawings and the approval process for the city. Any other questions? Oh, ring none in finance. All in favor of this project? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Okay. Thank you. Upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkowitz, whereas the City Council approved $275,000 for waterproofing and structural repairs at the E.J. Gear parking garage as part of the FY 2009 capital plan, and whereas substantial progress has been made <coughs> in the past year, including upgrades to the stair systems, extensive waterproofing, and structural repairs, and whereas there remains additional work as a result of change orders to complete this phase of the repairs and additional funds are needed from receipts reserved for appropriation. Uh, in parking, order that $10,950 from the receipts reserved for appropriation parking be appropriated <coughs> to the garage structural repair project. Do we have a motion to finance? So motion, second. All right. Uh, Mr. Pomeran. So last summer, um, we did extensive structural repairs and waterproofing to the garage, and that was year one of what I think will probably be a three or four year uh, maintenance program to basically address items that have come up over the years uh, since the, the garage was put into place in 1989. Um, we have a whole list of things to be done this summer. Uh, that is on the capital program and actually that's already been appropriated. This additional amount of money is for some change orders. Uh, once the contractor was on site last summer and fall, we discovered some additional waterproofing that needed to be done. And the building department was also requiring uh, construction control from, by an outside engineer to oversee the work. So we ended up with about ten thousand plus dollars of additional costs on the project, and that's what this, this additional amount is for. Uh, we have some punch list work from the contractor left to be done this in the next two weeks, and then that phase will be closed out. Questions, uh, Councilor? No, I want to thank you. Uh, David, on the replies that I had emailed and had concerns about the original price and then a new price being added on to this, so I appreciate you emailing me back and letting me know what I'm going to order. Oh, yeah. Uh, any other questions in the oh, 
All in favor of a positive Aye. recommendation? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. On the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narker, it's ordered that $10,960 be appropriated from the receipts reserved for appropriation parking to cover salary adjustments as a result of collective bargaining and other actions, and that funds be allocated to the following accounts. $1,742 to parking enforcement permanent salaries and $9,218 to parking maintenance permanent salaries. Do we have a motion? Make a motion. Second? Second. Second. All right. Any uh, questions or discussions on this one? No? Uh, Mayor? Uh, yeah. Uh, um, y there's another order coming up. It's actually the one following the next one, um, which is doing some movement within the budget, within salary line items, to, uh, to be able to, um, to close out the year uh, in salaries uh, appropriately based on collective bargaining and other personnel actions. This one has to come to you separately because parking enforcement's paid out of the park, uh, receipts reserved for parking account. That's why this one's sort of off on its own. Um, but that's what this, uh, this movement is, is to bring in an additional uh, 1700 into permanent salaries parking enforcement and then 9218 for parking maintenance again we have some bargaining unit members and we also have some NRs uh, and this is to reflect the increases that have happened uh, mid FY 2014 to get us to the end of the fiscal year and, and typically we'll see more of these this shuffling as we near the end of the fiscal year to take unused money from one section and put it somewhere else to balance everything off mm -hmm. Yeah, in this case, it's coming right from the receipt reserve for appropriation, which is parking revenue that we use to fund these uh, salaries. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, questions? Uh, no questions at all? All right. Then all in favor of a positive Aye. recommendation? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. Okay. On the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkowitz, whereas the City Council will be asked to approve additional structural repairs to the E.J. Gare parking garage as part of the FY15 capital plan, and whereas design work is necessary, to prepare the project for bidding and construction, and whereas the intent is to bid the work in before the end of fiscal year 14 so the work can be completed during the summer of fiscal 15, order that $9,900 from the receipts reserved for appropriation parking be appropriated to fund the design work associated with the upcoming capital project. Do we have a motion? Make a motion. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bomerantz is back. Any questions? Wanna so what we'd like to do is, is get the design work finished so we can bid this in the next probably three to five weeks um, so that when the uh, we hit the July 1st beginning of fiscal 15 the capital money is is there and we can uh, get the work started uh, through the summer as opposed to pushing it into the fall when there's just so much more activity at the garage and we also start running into inclement weather um, the engineers are ready to go with the design I just need to give them the approval um, we'll take their designs and then bid the project. Questions? Uh, Councilor Marsh. Yes. Would you like two readings on this one? Because it sounds like you really want to get moving on this. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Two readings when it gets to Any other questions? All in favor of a positive recommendation of finance? Aye. Aye. Any, Aye. any unopposed? Or, oh. All right. And this is our last one. And this is. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bond. This is um, a bunch of budgetary transfers that I'll read for you. Order that the following FY14 budgetary transfers are hereby made. Um, to the mayor's office, permanent salaries uh, looks like $482. Human resources permanent salaries, $2,815. Building inspectors permanent salary, $1,930. Building inspection salaries technical professional, $4,035. The treasurer's office legal, $4,500. The city clerk service bureau fees, $3,700. Unemployment, $26,000. Other employee benefits, unused earned leave, $85,000. Other employee benefits, Medicare, $26,500. Other employee benefits, Social Security, $356. Reserve for personnel, wage adjustments reserve, $32,000. Police, uh, O&M for vehicles, $10,000. Police permanent salaries, um, I think that's where the $10,000 is coming from. And medical insurance, employee insurance benefits, 
um, this is another location that it's coming from, 1800, 1, $187,318. So that we're transferring $197,318 and it's coming from police permanent salaries and medical insurance benefits. So the mayor, I think, can speak to this one. Again, uh, similar theme to the one that we just talked about with parking enforcement and parking management. Um, we're not asking you to appropriate any new money. This is all money that's within the budget already. We're just, we're moving some things around. You know, the police one is a good example. We have a need for $10,000 in O&M, and so we're asking you to basically move some 10,000 from P&S to O&M to be able to accomplish that. And again, um, tr again, through some of these other ones, we're looking to true up uh, some of the budgets as we get to the end of the year uh, so that we close the year accurately. Um, and then we've got some of the other accounts uh, like the um, uh, the unused earned leave account that we use to pay people out when they retire for benefits. We've had some retirements over the past several months. Uh, and so that, that fund has been depleted. So we need to make sure we put additional funds in that. Mm -hmm. So uh, so that's the purpose of this. And, and that fund really is a a best estimate of you at the beginning of the year, so you never know exactly what it's going to be until people tell you when they're coming. Especially when it comes to retirements, yes. We try to trend, we do trend analysis to see what, how much we should have in there at any one time. But if there's a, um, let's say somebody who worked for the city for 40 years who retires, uh, they may have a lot of uh, accrued benefits that get paid out. So, yeah. Councilor Kern? I'll defer to the oh, member. Councilor LaBarge. Um, Mayor, what is City Clerk OM Service Bureau fees? Yeah, so um, uh, actually we could, I don't know, we could probably even ask your, uh, your clerk this, but there are some fees um, uh, that the uh, City Clerk has to pay um, as, part of, uh, as part of the work that she does. Um, this one I think is it's, it's for general code. Um, the folks who do, when you pass these ordinances tonight and then we have to send them to general code, um, I guess we've, you've been more prolific this year. Uh, and so those charges are, uh, we're not going to close the budget uh, with enough funds. So she, we are giving her some additional funds in her budget to cover, hopefully to get her through the rest of the year for those service bureau fees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mayor, so for the line and unemployment benefits, I mean, I know that we don't pay into the unemployment trust fund as a municipality. And so is that 26000 reflective of? Yeah, we don't uh, pay into the trust fund. We're, we're, we pay the full amount. We do. We do. Sure. So we're, we're self-insured. Yes, so right. So, so would that 26000 reflect the paying the unemployment benefits for one person or for two people at this I mean. Uh, do you have a sense of just we've uh, we we have to pay those benefits out over the year when people leave our service uh, in some cases and so again I think we're concerned that that actual uh, budget line item is going to fall short mm -hmm. so I don't know mm -hmm. if you have is there a specific answer on that one no well, this is just an estimate of what I think we'll need for the rest of the year we've probably paid through um, March right now okay. and we'll get them uh, you know the May and June bills and we're probably going to need some more and given that we pay the full boat that's actually no. not a high number mm -hmm. um, well you are you have a budget line item that had I I think it had 75 to 85 thousand already okay. in the yep. budget. so this is on top of what we've already budgeted okay but still even with that even if with that hundred thousand dollars should it be that total that's really only reflective of probably three or four personnel with or maybe maybe half a dozen at the most that may have been affected by or need unemployment benefits and, and the way unemployment works too if someone leaves our service and takes another job somewhere but then gets laid off or fired from that job right then, then they go back so many months so sometimes we end up paying unemployment on an employee that we that didn't twice removed. it's not yeah. right it's not our fault um, right or that employee's fault so right. so we get dinged with that as well okay thank you um, other questions in finance on this? No? All, right. All in favor of a positive Aye. recommendation? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Um, so that's the end of finance. And I think, uh, again, we'll probably see more of these as the fiscal year winds down and moving around. The place. So a motion to adjourn finance? Move to adjourn. Second. Oh, Councilor Adams? I just want to state that pursuant to our discussion last time, at some point, hopefully soon, I'm going to present um, some proposed 
changes to this to the way this committee meets within this council. Thank you. Motion to adjourn is still there. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right. We're convening back on regular session. And um, in, in deference to actually Councilor Adams' uh, discussion point, I think that uh, I'm going to presume that you were going to want me to waive the readings of each of these financial yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. All of them. <laughs> okay. So I'll bring them forward in order as they are in the agenda. And the first stop is the authorization of $264,200 for Conservation Commission to acquire 50 acres in the Sawmill Hills Conservation Area. And this is the first reading. I'll accept the to motion. Approve. The motion. The second. Any further discussion on this point? Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Right here. Yep. Oh, right. Okay. Next up, and we're going <laughs> to we're going to be considerate of Sam and stop slamming uh, slam her up with uh, multiple um, roll call orders just so she can get reset. <laughs> this is the uh, well, actually. So first up is the. Uh, financial order, the expenditure authorization, the expenditure from uh, the Commission on Disabilities Fund for the banner for the uh, for the uh, to exceed a hundred dollars to approve. Second, second, and any discussion on the uh, roll call, please. Yes, 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 yes. 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 Suspend rule 14. Wait, let her finish. Oh, Sorry. I didn't hear her. <laughs> oh, you're doing fine. We have to wait till the roll is finished, completed. Okay. So Who's the second reading? motion passes in first reading, and there is a motion to suspend rules. Second. Uh, and there's a second, and the suspension of rules, rule 14, which requires a second reading in the following meeting asking for a request to suspend that. The motion's been made. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor of suspending rules, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? opposed. And Move second uh, reading. Okay. There's a motion for second reading. Second. There's a second. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, and actually, Okay. I just did, I didn't do a roll call. Okay, so now we're doing a roll call on this. Yeah. I'm sorry. Are you ready? I don't think yeah. This is for a, a roll call vote for $100. <laughs> okay, Councillor DeWest. Yes. Councillor Yes. Yes. Okay, it is, is passed in second reading. Um, the next up is the financial order. This is to reprogram $6,691.03 from Northampton High School track resurfacing project to the security systems that uh, you heard Mr. Palmer insisted. So moved. Second. Motion second. put on the floor. Is there a second? Second. It. Second, okay. Any further discussion? You ready, Pam? <coughs> All right, roll call. Yes. 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 Suspend. No, now it's you can do that. <laughs> like, there's been a motion to suspend rules uh, to allow for a second reading tonight. Second. There's a second. Any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor of suspending rules, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Yeah. Any any abstentions? I'll accept a motion for second reading. So moved. Second. Uh, any further discussion? Ready, Pam? Councilor Levar. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Aldana. Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Yes. 
Up next is uh, to appropriate 100 is, is a financial order to appropriate $117,200 from the FY2014 general fund on designated fund balance, also known as free cash, to the Academy of Music Fire Escape Repair Replacement Project. Move to approve. Second. There's a motion made and seconded. Uh, any further discussion on this project? Hit it. <laughs> it's you. you got it. Yes. 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 Uh, now, and that has passed uh, in first reading and will come up again at the next meeting on the 15th. Uh, next up is financial order, which is an appropriation of $10,950 from receipts reserved for appropriation parking to uh, to the garage structural repair program. This is first reading. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Yes. 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 Uh, ju just to point out, what we're putting Pam through is she has to rejigger the order every single time. I know. <laughs> yes. And so when we when we bulk load these um, roll call orders, it, it's it's a challenge. So I'm going to. Yeah. Um, we also now have an, uh, a financial order. This is in first reading uh, uh, to appropriate $10,960 from receipts reserved for appropriation parking to cover parking enforcement and parking maintenance salaries. And this is the first reading, as I said. To approve. Second. Motion's made and seconded. <laughs> the thunder? That's what it sounds. All emergency services, I hope. <laughs> to adjourn. Okay. All right. <laughs> Run away. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, any discussion on this? Okay, Pam. Yes. 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 And that will also come up at the next meeting on the 15th for a second reading. Uh, next up is to appropriate $9,900 from receipts reserved for appropriation. Uh, parking to fund design work associated with the upcoming capital project. Uh, <coughs> motion. Move to approve. <coughs> second. And a second. Okay. Any further discussion? <coughs> Roll call, please. Council Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Murphy. Yes. Yes. Suspend uh, rule 14. For the second reading. Because I had asked him. Suspension? I had okay. asked him. There's a motion made to suspend rules to, to allow for a second reading tonight. Is there a second? Second. Seconded. Any discussion on the suspension rules for this particular order? We'll have thunder in a second. <laughs> um, any further That's discussion? Great. All those in favor of suspending rules, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Any abstentions? I'll accept the motion and second reading. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Uh, this is from the FY2014 budgetary transfers of $197,318 since the first reading. Uh, those were described, uh, those were laid out in uh, finance. So moved. Second. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 
Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Now we come up to the portion where uh, it reflects the work that you did at the last meeting, which was the second readings for the finance board. By the way, I want to take this moment to gratefully thank Councillor Adams for stepping up. I watched the meeting very well done <laughs> and got it done in, in pretty short order. Maybe kind of raised the bar there. So, yeah. um, we're, uh, so this is the second reading. This is uh, the appropriation of $165,000 from the Community Preservation Act funding uh, to to the playground rehabilitation at Bridge Street School. It's the second reading. Oops, second reading. So a motion made and seconded. Uh, any further discussion of this? I gather there's some excitement about this. Um, okay. Roll call on second reading. Yes. 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 And next up is also uh, in second reading the appropriation of $130,000 from the Community Preservation Act funding to Christopher Heights Assisted Living, uh, the grant and group at Northampton Mayor's Office. Is there a motion? Move to approve. Second. Any further discussion? Is there any other further questions that you want to ask the mayor? Who, who wasn't present at the meeting, so I don't know. No? Okay, roll call, please. Yes. 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 On this, uh, also in second reading, is the appropriation of $200,000 from the Community Preservation Act funding to the Rocky Hill Open Space Acquisition. This is the Northampton Conservation Commission and Office of Planning and Sustainability. Move to approve. Motion is made and seconded. Any further discussion on this side? Roll call. Yes. 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 Uh, this is an appropriation of $195,000 from the Community Preservation Act funding to housing supportive services in the Northampton Housing Partnership. Second reading. Move to approve. Second. Seconded. Second. 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 I'm sorry? You missed number 10. Yes. I missed number 10? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was made the meeting. Stop testing. Oh, boy. All right. Sorry. My bad. Thank you for catching Council Shiera. Uh, oh, points out that I made a mistake. Thanks. Just rubbing my nose. I got to practice. You know, <laughs> 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 it's my bad. It is my bad. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Why don't we do number 10? If, any, I'll, I'll, if everyone's okay with that, we'll go back to the proper Yes. That's okay. All right with that? All right, this is a financial order of the appropriate, and also in second reading, appropriation of $50,000 from the Preservation Act funding to playground creation. Uh, I suppose it's kind of important. Uh, Northampton Recreation Department and Sustainability. Move to approve. Second. Seconded. Yes. 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 I look forward to seeing that. Okay. <laughs> Me too. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> I, I suspect it will be. Any other discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Yes. 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 Where were we? <laughs> what, 13. Now we're up to. We're up to uh, do we do 12? Do we do? Do we vote on 12, or did I just say we did? Okay, so we're up to number 13. This is the appropriation of $195,000 from the new president's tax fund to housing supportive services. That's correct. Oh, we oh we got the motion. The mo okay, so that's actually on the floor still. The motions are made and seconded on that. So, um, the, pointing out again that this is second reading. Uh, any further discussion on this item? No. No. Ready for the roll call. Council Murphy. Yes. Council O'Donnell. Yes. Council Yes. 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 Yes.
Yes. Yes. That is passed in second reading as well. Uh, number 14, the financial order of this appropriation of $26,500 from Community Preservation Act funding to the grandstand preservation at the three county fairs. Move to approve. Is second. Motion? Second. second. Any discussion on this? Roll call, please. Council O'Donnell. Yes. Council Yes. Council Yes. Council Yes. Council Yes. 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 Abstain. So this is the last financial order is the uh, in second reading appropriation of forty thousand dollars from the Community Preservation Act funding the Sawmill Hill Survey, uh, Northampton Conservation Commission. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call in this place. Yes. 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 It's been approved in second. Um, now we're up to orders and ordinances. Uh, the first order, this is also, these are, I believe, so let's see. First three are second readings, the work that you've already done. Uh, this is, the first order is to change, uh, the change to city council rules, rule three, Suspension of, uh, yes. It's been referred to committee. Is it? Yeah. Did it get, okay, got it, yes. You did not vote on it, Wes. Right. Right, okay. So this is being, okay, so the first order that, yeah, okay. Thank you. Uh, okay. It's referred to two committees, though, so we know, right? It's still referred, because wasn't it also referred to, um, Oh, I'm, I'm confusing it with another rule. Right. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Story I, I only see that being referred to uh, ordinance. ordinance. Right. I'm thinking of the school committee, conference committee. Got it. Um, but now we come up to we come up to the orders and the end. And I should point out that obviously the obvious that the mayor is here, and so that uh, there were I saw that there were some questions and debate on these items. But this is support for private and shared vehicle services. Second reading. I'll accept a motion. Put it on the floor. So moved. Second. Okay. Um, questions? Do you? Yeah, <laughs> Councilor Adams and Councilor. Go ahead. No, or, it's all right. All right. Mayor, I, I'll just recap some of the things we discussed, and uh, some of my questions and just some points. Um, starting with, we were, part of the idea of this is that we want. Um, to give Zipcar some incentive to be here. So we're gonna give them, you know, an opportunity to have certain spaces and, and possibly at a discounted race, right, possibly. Um, and one of the points I raise is that um, they're already here. They're, they're at Smith College. They're a success within the city. There's no reason to think that they won't be a success downtown. There's no risk for them, really. Um, so um, if you, if, if there's any in, in, intent to give them a financial incentive, um, I don't think that that's necessary because they're here and they're successful. So perhaps you could respond to that for, to start. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I I, uh, I haven't uh, we haven't um, we haven't had any direct negotiations about this issue yet. There have been some preliminary conversations among staff. Obviously, their uh, model has changed. Uh, I think you've discussed the history of this when they first came to town. Smith actually had to guarantee a certain amount. Um, you know, had to sort of to make up the difference if they didn't reach certain <laughs> thresholds they started with a couple cars they've now grown to several other cars um, that was through an education program which is a different sort of subset of what they do amherst college and and smith college got cars and a lot of other small college towns got them through that way this would be obviously branching out into a city uh, and coming into to the downtown city i'm obviously supportive of of trying to create more opportunities for alternative transportation, for getting more cars off the streets, uh, and uh, you know, particularly for people who live downtown, parking is a huge issue. And so, to the extent that we can help people make different choices about car ownership or not needing to own a car because you have access to these, um, I think that meets some of our goals for sustainability and and for uh, you know downtown. Um, so. 
you know, when I sit down with them, I, I will certainly take into account uh, the success of the Smith program, and, and we're going to take a look at um, the park, you know, what spaces we're talking about. I know that the ordinance has now been amended to leave open the option that they could be in the garage, they could be outside, uh, they could, you know, they could be surface lot spots. Um, so I'm cognizant of the concerns that I'm hearing, and I'm hearing it from the public about this. Um, at the same time, I do think there's a benefit to the city um, from having access to the car sharing. So I'm going to try to weigh weigh those 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 two two issues. Yeah. Um, because I, I like this, I like the model. I like the shared service model. But I, to me, if if they were to receive a discount, that would be a corporate subsidy, and I'm opposed to them on you know even in small amounts on all levels, federal, state, and local. Mm -hmm. And um, and I think we need the money more than they do. And and the service isn't free to Northampton members. Just to clarify, uh, they they pay. They pay a membership and they mm -hmm. pay per usage. Yep. And um and and I don't see why they should get dedicated covered parking. I don't see why, for example, we don't give them, um, you know, they can buy permits, for example, to an outdoor lot. Um, they're not going to be used all the time. And why can't we? Why do they need dedicated covered parking? Yeah, I mean, again, uh, Smith has a combination. They have some that's indoors. They have some that's outdoors. Um, that'll be part of the discussion. That'll, that'll probably be a question I'll ask them. Uh, obviously, you know, the, the parking garage is sort of a centrally located um, place. Uh, you know, wintertime can prevent can provide some logistical issues around the cars, maintaining the cars, clearing the snow from the cars, moving the cars so we can clear the snow. Um, that's not insurmountable, though, so that certainly can be a discussion point with them about whether indoor or outdoor, because obviously those indoor spaces are, va are, are more valuable spots. So that's a valid concern that I can take to them when I have those discussions. Um, also, on, on the subject of fairness, you know, we have leaseholders. Um, in the, if, if they were to receive dedicated covered spots in the garage, we have leaseholders um, who pay $90 a month for the lower portion um, there are a hundred about a hundred cards out and there are only 70 spots so those some of those leaseholders sometimes can't park down in the dedicated mm -hmm. part sometimes they can't even park in the entire garage um, I experienced this when I used to have that pass so uh, and, and I learned I learned from this discussion that as much as 30 percent of traffic downtown is caused by vehicles looking for parking um, so Making fewer spots available to those leaseholders could leave them looking for parking, contributing to that problem, that, and that would have the converse effect of what we want. Um, but also, you know, fairness to other businesses. There, there are other businesses that do things that give an environmental benefit, as like taxi cabs, for example. And 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 you know, how is this fair to them? If I were a taxi cab company, particularly you know, a local one, I'm, I'm probably employing local people. I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't even be eligible for this. I mean, I, 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 I'm concerned that they would deem this as unfair, and I think they have a valid point. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, because someone mentioned this to me about the taxis, and someone mentioned taxi stands, and I, 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 I know we had this discussion at Transportation and Parking like seven or eight years ago um, about this issue of taxi stands, and I thought we had, um, maybe Councillor Carney remembers this, I thought we had decided we might create a placard for taxis that would allow them to park, I think, for like one hour in a spot or something. And um, I'm not sure what became We didn't of follow that. through, but we did have conversations about that. Yeah. I think so, I mean, so, I mean, I think that there's ways to do that. I think taxis and car sharing services are two different things. Um, but, I, but to your point, that is, that is a valid point, and we'd have to take that in consideration. But we do have the ability in our ordinance, it does allow for the creation of taxi stands. Um, you know, at this point, the volume of taxis that we have, uh, you know, we have an operator downtown that operates out of a downtown location, and so they have a dispatch center. And so at this point, I, you know, I don't know if we have a critical mass for taxi stands. If we, you know, if, if, if I haven't heard from any taxi companies requesting that we create taxi stands. Um, you know, that becomes a trade-off then that you'd have to give up a parking space for a taxi stand. Um, you know, I could envision possibly, you know, future train station needing to have a taxi stand or something like that. But um, so that's a valid point. But in terms of the car sharing piece, uh, again, I'm, I'm taking the concerns that I'm hearing from the council and from the public into consideration when I have those conversations. Um, it, it's a... It's a 
to, they were purchased last year for a half a billion dollars. So that's why I'm so concerned about the fairness issue. But, but, um, and I trust you, but what assurances can I have that these concerns will be met? I mean, because because for me, it's the difference between voting yes or no, yes and no. I would mm -hmm. never support them if they if they were getting a discount to be in the garage. Not I just never. I didn't know way. Or you know, so what are my assurances that that won't happen? I mean, just because I because if I don't have the assurances, I I can't vote yes on it. Okay. Uh, and it's hard for me without having the discussion with them to understand what it is they're trying to do and what their you know uh, model is, what they're trying to accomplish. If they have any metrics that they need to meet, um, you know, we may be able to structure it. We may be able to structure something, you know, a deal that that uh, allows for that payment to happen based on certain metrics that they meet or something like that. So, I mean, there's lots of possibilities. I can't, you know, short of you putting it in the in the order, I can't really give you that guarantee at this point until I have a chance to talk to them. Um, so. But obviously, I think people who know my record know that I, um, you know, uh, try to represent the taxpayers and obviously try to uh, protect the parking system and, uh, and would not want to, you know, I also have to point out, um, you know, we give away parking, I mean, we give away, we don't give it away, but we, you know, we heavily subsidize parking. Uh, we heavily subsidize parking and we, in some ways, encourage driving and parking the way we, you know, take prime land downtown and turn it into parking lots. Uh, and we also, you know, our rates may not necessarily reflect um, uh, market rates, uh, which is the subject of a future study that we'd like to do. But um, so, you know, there's always subsidies uh, that are happening uh, in terms of driving and encouraging people not to drive and drive. And again, this is sort of the intersection of that parking subsidy and how do you encourage more people not to, to drive. You know, the, the idea of the sur surfing for parking or cruising for parking is the terminology. You know, the concept of Zipcar is if you've got, you know, people that opt not to own a second car because they have access to a Zipcar, uh, or maybe they live downtown and they don't need a car at all because they've got PBTA, and when they need to make a trip to wherever, they know they have a Zipcar. Maybe that's one less car uh, that is causing people to have to cruise for parking. So there's, you know, there's, there's other things at, at play as well. Um, I have similar concerns to Councillor Adams. I think that um, to me, the kind of sticking point is that this company, when it was purchased last year by Avis, it um, brought in $246 million of income to Avis. And so subs giving them this kind of $9,000 bonus to come to the city when they are clearly a for-profit company, it's no longer um, you know, this little entrepreneurial startup that started in 2000 like it was when it first came to Smith. It's a very different landscape at this mm -hmm. point. Um, and just in doing some research about it, I saw that there are tw uh, estimated 26 um, different car share services in the country at this point. And so since we're not putting this out to bid and we're, you know, pursuing this with Zipcar specifically, I just don't see the point in offering them this $9,000 incentive when it's clearly this mega corp that can absolutely afford to to pay for that parking. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's really the concern that I have. Okay. And I do want to say for the record, I absolutely support the idea of a car share service. I think it's, you know, really important environmentally and for, you know, traffic mitigation and all of those reasons. But I, I do think that we have to, um, really think about that idea of do we want to subsidize this corporation and you know if we're not putting this out to bid especially um, do we want to subsidize this corporation to come to our city okay fair point well, I guess I just want to support you in bringing Zipcar here <clears throat> I think to frame and I, I think you'll do the best you can to get the best deal you can I would hope there would be a lot of different zip cars fighting over this and paying us money to come here and I think if that were the case, that's great. But I think it's important to have Zipcar here. I think it's important to understand that the reason they don't do this, this came up last time, is this is something that's only recently been moving to smaller communities. We understand that. In bigger cities, in New York and Boston, you find Zipcar all over the place. I'm sure they're not giving them incentives to come there. But sometimes, you know, this is the system we live under. And I think for environmental reasons, 
to cut down on traffic and in the long run probably to save the city in terms of parking i'd love to see there someday be 30 or 40 zip cars in the city so i just want to give you support to as i know you will make the best deal you can and uh but i think it's important to have zip cars here my uh my, my question from last meeting was um how long are the terms of the contracts that you are thinking about negotiating with Zipcar? It seems like they could change and you could revisit them. And if there was a subsidy in the first contract period, it might be kind of a, a sweetener that would go away in the future. Uh -huh. So I guess my, my specific question is, what are the terms? My understanding is their model is a um, is to do a uh, is to do a three-year contract, but they have very um, general liberal. What, after one year, both parties are very free to, to, to get out of the deal. So it's effectively a one-year you know, contract, but there's a three. You know, they like to do a three-year re renewable at, at each year, uh, but both parties have the option. So I think where you're going, I could see you know, one discussion point about um, you know talking about you know looking at the first you know six months and 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 having a uh, an ability to look back and look at and look at their data and look at their revenue um, and try to make build in some things around that sort of similar to what Smith did when they originally got started um, so I think that's definitely a possibility if I could just editorialize I mean I, I think I mean I, I understand how it's unpalatable to uh, provide seem to provide a subsidy or, or actually provide a subsidy to a large corporation I think it might be, I think giving a permanent subsidy is different from giving a temporary one. I probably all agree on that. Um, and that comes into play for me. Okay, so. Yeah. Council LaBarge. Uh, Mayor, why couldn't we go out to bid on this? Uh, we certainly could. We were, uh, and that, and actually nothing precludes us. Actually, the, the, um, the, uh, the one that you've, the, the authorization you're giving us is up to six bases, so you could, and Zipcar has approached us. They're already a known entity in town, and so, um, but there's nothing that could preclude us from asking some of the other uh, companies to. And again, I think part of this will be, you know, what what is the success of, of one car sharing company, and is there enough? Do they see enough business to support multiple car sharing companies in one in a city that our size? So, um, so that's you know certainly the future. We could get into a situation where we could, I mean, that would be great if we had people bidding, uh, you know, on 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 our on having a car sharing service <coughs> in our city. Chair, um, I guess uh, I'm thinking of this in the context of other subsidies that we've given. Um, I generally, the uh, most common was the tax increment financing that we give for larger corporations, and um, those are more clear in terms of. We have language actually that's been developed by your office and um, that that's actually puts into contracts community benefits that would be associated with that, jo jobs that are, you know, a specific number of jobs that would be created. Um, something like this is really difficult to transfer in the sense that, it's, I mean, Zipcar is not going to be creating jobs. But I guess my, uh, and it's, I mean, we're talking a much smaller amount of money than. The much larger uh, tax savings that many corporations we've given in our TIF programs are then leveraged against even larger state resources. But um, my question, I guess, is what kind? Is there some specific language? I, th I think you were hearing that there would be. It would be helpful to know that there, that you would be seeking some really specific community benefits for the city of Northampton, especially if we're going to be trading, you know, some some loss of revenue and loss of space, I guess, for other drivers. So if there's a way that, I mean, and, and again, this is completely in your, we're, we're handing this over to you to negotiate, but what I'm hearing from colleagues, and I would think myself, that having something specific in there about a community benefit for the city of Northampton would be, make it more palatable, probably. Yeah, that's fair, and, and I mean, I know that their typical model is they typically hire somebody locally to be kind of the steward of the cars and to be a hands-on um, I think that's really the only employee that they would have um, someone locally um, I'm not sure how that would work out but I have been well uh, I, you know 
I doubt people from Zipcar are watching this meeting, I, so I could probably speak about this. But I have been kicking around some ideas. For example, um, some of our larger government agencies, I think including UMass and larger cities, um, have now moved to, um, you know, instead of uh, either, uh, you know, uh, having a motor pool and having employees take a motor pool vehicle uh, to a conference or to go, you know, often you'll see state vehicles going up and down the Mass Pike. Um, UMass, I think, has moved to this model that um, city employees could use, uh, zip, could have a Zipcar account so that if, a, you know, planners have to go to a conference at UMass Boston, instead of uh, using a city vehicle or being reimbursed for mileage, they could use Zipcar. Um, so I've, you know, one of the ideas I've thought about is could uh, a certain amount of, um, of uh, you know those sorts of memberships or usage be allocated to the city uh, for for use by employees, which obviously saves us money. It saves uh, cuts down on having to have car additional cars and gas and all that stuff. So that's one potential community benefit I could think about as as an idea. Yeah. Council um, Chair. I I think that. While they are obviously a, a really successful corporation, the fact that this is for our, that our market is kind of experimental for them is um, a, a reason that we could temporarily provide this, you know, meet sort of their demands as long as they're, um, it, it, we have a safeguard in there so that we can revisit that in the future. Um, and and to, to Councillor Klein's point, oh no, I'm sorry, to Councillor Lavard's point. Um, I think the fact that Smith already uses Zipcar, as we talked about the, at the last meeting, we sort of, since they have Zipcars there, bringing Zipcar into the city means like we automatically have a larger fleet of cars. And so I feel like for the consumer, while um, it might in the future might be good to go out to bid, this there's sort of an added benefit to adding on to that group of cars because there's more opportunity for people to use them. So I think. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I do. I I have a Zipcar account which I got when I when Smith first introduced it in the city and, and I've used it. I've used it in other cities around the country when I've traveled and I can say that when I've, sometimes when I've looked to reserve cars in town, even the five that we have are sometimes they're all taken. It's so sometimes on certain peak periods, the cars are all in use. So it would, you know, you can actually, you can use the ones in Amherst if you, but then you have to get over to Amherst to get the car and then, and then get it back to Amherst. So, so if we had like two companies, then there'd be, you'd have, smaller pools you'd have well to, you probably would need two different two different, different accounts yeah different you probably have to have two different memberships so. yeah right. council right. Um, um, just just briefly i want to point out that if they are hiring someone local to me that that's gives them the opportunity to um do things like move cars during snowstorms which mm -hmm. to me means that they again wouldn't need necessarily need mm -hmm. covered parking yep so, no, and that's and I believe that's what happens at this. Um, is it Dickinson? Whatever the dormitory is, right off of Trumbull. Uh, not Trumbull, but uh, right, right, right downtown, right close to um, to the art museum. There's there's a few outdoors at a dormitory there, so that does happen. Yeah, and I think that's partly what the person does. They probably also deal with maintenance issues or other kinds of problems. And I don't know if this person is local or if they're regional or I'm not quite sure how that works, but. It's the Zipcar elves. Okay. I just want to say I, I do intend to support this, um, but you know, with reservation, just related to this particular oh, I, point I, of the is, subsidy is, of is the duly noted. parking spaces, yeah. and I really want to encourage you to keep in mind that we're talking about you know Avis, a corporation that is making an awful lot of money from um, Zipcar mm -hmm. when you negotiate with them. Definitely. Hey, for the uh, council items. Um, I'm, I'm going to vote against this, and, and again, it's not a lack of trust, but I just I would need to be I would need certain assurances that maybe you can't give, but without those assurances, I can't support it. Thank you. Any other discussion on this? This is the second reading. This would be the final vote. Uh, roll call. Yes. 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 No. Yes. Yes. Um, I didn't hear my name. Oh, Council Lombardi. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Pam has pointed out to me that um, 
there was a request on the finance order for the fire escape project for a second reading, and we didn't actually do a second reading. And uh -huh. if I don't know if it's the council's pleasure to move out of order, call for yes. a second reading on that. Yes. I, I call for it for but I'd like to discuss it, so I make the motion for a second reading. Okay, um, motion for, well, actually, uh, to suspension dispense rule. with, or excuse me, yeah. suspend rule 14, right? Yes. Yeah. Second and rule 14, the second, yes. and the discussion? Well, I, I suggested it um, and asked if it was something that would be um, desirable. My, what I heard was that it would be desirable, but perhaps not completely necessary, and if it's $100,000 and it's not absolutely required, Maybe we ought to not suspend rules and just keep the normal procedure. Council Adams. Yeah, I, I've been voting no on this a lot tonight, and it's just because I, I think we're giving even more than are requested. And, and so for me, I mean, the, the rule's there for a reason to have two votes. And if it's not even requested, I'm not really inclined to. If it's not requested by, by someone presenting it, I'm not really inclined to, to go ahead and do yeah, that. Yeah, I. Was it requested? Okay. I, I raised it because I thought fire escape is a safety okay. issue and they have a timetable. But if, in fact, it wasn't requested beforehand, I'm fine. Uh, waiting till next time okay all those in favor of suspending rules say aye 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 no. uh actually why don't we do this all those in favor of suspending rules raise your hand well okay and all those opposed yeah. okay it does the rules are not suspended we'll go back to the break board. um thank you and thank you for that indulgence i appreciate that uh but do, do, do we go, where are we gonna find my agenda here Figure out what page I'm on here. We're so close. We're so close. Ordinance number three. This is for the. Um, uh, this is also in second reading. The parking meter locations and regulations of uh, private shared vehicles. Uh, following on the same conversation. Is there a motion? Put it on the floor. So moved. A second. Okay. Any discussion on this? I would. I would hope the objections and concerns and questions are relatively the same. Uh, okay. Roll call, please, Pam. This one. Yes. 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 No. It's the media regulation. Yes. 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 Uh, the ordinance passes. Counselors. Yes. Just up to speed here. Just want to yeah, we're just make sure. making sure we're at the right numbers here. Yeah. We're at the right numbers. We're at number four. Thank okay. you. Council I, I got caught off guard. Is it too late to just make a quick comment on what we just voted on? <laughs> no, sure. Go ahead. <laughs> I would just like to say that I think the ordinance is actually fine. And I think it's independent of, of the discussion we're having. If you read it, it just gives the authority for the mayor to do this. The entire discussion is about the order, not the ordinance. Right. So, right. right. Thank you. Uh, 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 an important Why distinction. That yes, that's important. <laughs> uh, this is on first reading. Actually, you've got. Well, there we go. This is second reading. This is it. We do these. This. Is it this one? Yes, and this is. This is number four. Okay. This, this is, about the this is uh, in first reading. This is upon the recommendation of the Transportation Parking Commission, an ordinance of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts, providing the Code of Ordinances of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts, be amended by revising Section 312 102 of said code, providing that Schedule 1 parking prohibited at all times, and be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Northampton and the City Council assembled as follows Section 1, that Section 312 uh, 102 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts be amended so that such section shall read as follows. Um, this is the Schedule 1 parking prohibition all times uh, on State Street westerly from Elm Street to a point 216 feet northerly. Um, I'll accept the motion and put this on the floor. So moved. Second. And would someone from Parking Transportation care to discuss this? Uh, Council O'Donnell? Um, <clears throat> I'd be happy to. Uh, this was presented to us from um, part of Planning and Sustainability, and basically it's this along with its companion ordinance is the elimination of several parking spaces on State Street. Um, the purpose of it is, if you, you can refer to the map on the back, um, 
there's a vision of changing that entire intersection. And this is kind of low-hanging fruit in that process. Um, the idea is to eventually create a, a right turning lane uh, to reduce that bottleneck that develops on mm. State Street. Makes sense. Um, if we One remove of some of those, indeed, yes. So that's the explanation. Council Shara. Um, so I, I think it's a great idea to, to create a turning lane there because, as we know, there's a bottleneck. Not only is there a bottleneck, people scoot through the, the parking lot of the Catholic Church to mm -hmm. get around that because mm -hmm. you can see that you could turn, but you've got, like, you know, 10 cars in front of you and there are parked cars there. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a good idea. I'm a little bit concerned about getting rid of that parking um, because I know the businesses right there utilize that or depend on that parking and uh, the parent center you, plenty of parents in the mornings, Monday through Thursday, use that parking right there to go into the parent center um, and the bottom of Edwards Church. So is there any discussion about replacing that parking or, and, and so am I right, it's all those spots that are, if you're looking, I guess if you're facing, heading to looking at Main Street, all the, the spots on the right? S several of them. Three. Several. So it's not all of them. No, it's three spots, three. isn't it? Three. It's three spots. Yeah, three. So, so three spaces. Many? Establishing a right-hand turn lane to about halfway through uh, the middle of uh, flyby night. I would right. say. Right. Yeah. Is that about there aren't right? that many. Sp I mean, how many spaces are there? Like five, I mean, six. Four. Between about. where and where? Well, there's just there's only metered parking on that side of the street from, like pretty much across from flyby night, and. And it, it stops, and you don't have any more parking on that side for all. Yeah, it's kind of between where the two driveways are to go into the parking lot behind mm -hmm. the church, formerly right. known as St. Mary's Church. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So it would probably take out the first three. It probably leaves about four more. Oh, that many? Yeah, so there's some in there, but it's definitely that that intersection backs up all the way down to state and center oh, I know. At, at like five in the afternoon so this would let the left turn people as you say not yeah. cut through the parking lot right. to get around the backed up cars but right. make a and, and i think it goes with the plan to actually redo the intersection there and and put in more of a, a right turn lane so it, it makes it a lot safer i think yeah i know that um it's it's not uh, uh, an easy pill to swallow to just lose parking spaces downtown, and your point is well taken. Um, um, I think the trade-off is eventually increased safety um, at that intersection, increased uh, traffic flow. Um, and of course, I know you reside on State Street, so people could always park in your driveway. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's long. Jeez. I'll pull all the way up. number is she? <laughs> <laughs> But, but in all seriousness, I think it's um, it is a trade-off, and so it's what we have to weigh when we make it, uh, when we have a vote on this. Councilor Carney, I'll just Councilor ask um, when this discussion was had at transportation and parking. Um, were there any business? I mean, was there was there outreach to those number of businesses that are on that corner? I'm just, do you know? Uh, I process? I didn't conduct any outreach myself. I'm not aware. But this was presented by the planning department, or it was, yes. And those people aren't yes, here. We've lost them. Right. Um, uh, you know, I mean, we just had a discussion about losing parking to the general public, mm -hmm. and and we're doing having we're having the same discussion about another ordinance right now, and it's for a different reason, and they're all for good reasons, certainly legitimate, but uh, I think we need to really pay close attention to doing away with parking that we're not really replacing. Yeah, we have and, a picture right here. And. Um, and you know, I, I think that's a concern. There's, there's limited parking downtown. There's congestion problems. Those congestion problems are increasing. And um, I understand there's a long term here to alleviate some of that, but it also requires el el eliminating some parking. That's beginning to concern me. I'm so back to Yeah, and I think that's that's a good point. And that's why, as we heard in Edlu, that there's going to be a study done of parking and where parking should be and i think that's really important so that's going to come forward because i think what we're seeing is this whole issue of parking downtown is is something <coughs> that we look at comprehensively and i know that it's going to be asking um, probably asking for some funds to do that study um, and it's i i heard it's going to be done fairly soon was this talked about in transportation parking a more comprehensive study of the, the mayor has mentioned um the study as as kind of imminent but um, uh, Councilor Carney was next, unless 
I just, uh, during your after, question. Just after clarifying, you. someone asked, I think, about the number of spots. I think we're talking about between the two curb cuts that go into the um, mm -hmm. St. Mary's Church parking lot. There are nine spots. I'm just looking at the Google map right here. There are nine spots that, that run between those two curb cuts. Curb cuts, and the the uh, order asks for three of those on the um, south side, uh, south and west side of the street. So, and you can see actually the cars that are lined, how those cars would then merge into that right lane to more easily be able to turn right onto. Um, Onto Elm, I understand the concerns about about parking, but uh, I, and that's why I think this goes to Transportation and Parking Commission. And I, I, my other question, I guess, in that is that there still hasn't been an established parking subcommittee of the subcommittee to um, consider those uh, implications. That's not true. Well, um, on, on that point, um, Councilor, there, there is an, an active now um, an active parking committee. We have the membership, and it's starting to meet again. Uh, as I recall, there was actually a, um, a representative from the parking committee there at the time, and you know we just um, declined to send it to them for their review. Um, they still have the charge to look at parking, kind of in a holistic, universal way across the city. Um, and as you may know, they're starting a, a video project, for example, to record um, uh, parking patterns in um, downtown. So. Um, that's just kind of a thousand mile, a hundred mile up view of the parking site. They didn't specifically re, uh, review this particular proposal. And uh, just as a follow up, because yeah. we, we actually rely on the detailed and in depth conversations that happen at transportation and parking among the department heads involved, the public safety, the, you know, the regional transit representative, if there is still one who was there from public transit. And so, um, if I mean, uh, if if you are confident <coughs> that this was fully vetted at that committee, um, I'm, I'm confident yeah. in being able to vote on this tonight. My, my response is there was a comprehensive discussion within Transportation and Parking Commission. I don't want to represent that there wasn't a discussion, but it wasn't referred, and the vice chair is here as well. There wasn't referred to the Parking Committee, mm -hmm. but there still was, as you say, all the department heads were around one table and, and discussed this. Um, and to build on that, the point I wanted to make to Councillor Adams' point and Councillor Sherr's point about, you know, what does it mean to lose parking downtown when it's so uh, rare and, and, and precious? I, one way to think about this is let's imagine this, this diagram is what we have now. Would we consider changing this to put in parking spaces? I don't think so. I think we would prefer to keep it this way if this were the status quo. It feels bad to lose parking spaces, but if we get over that emotional um, challenge, then I, I would choose this. And I, I don't say it's emotional in terms of it's not rational. It's, it's just hard to lose parking spaces. Um, so if we have the choice between improving the intersection and losing three parking spaces downtown, as hard a choice as it is, I would choose to improve the intersection. Uh, Councilor Klein was next, and then, and then Councilor LaBarge, and then Councilor Adams. I just want to say I appreciate the concern about the loss of parking spaces, but I think you know you kind of have to weigh it with um, the problems we have with traffic flow. Um, yes, we're losing parking spaces and that's painful, but we're alleviating um, some real bottleneck situations and that's just as I think important as having the amount of parking spaces we need. Um, we did bring up the possibility in the committee, the commission, about uh, creating parking spaces for motorcycles because they're mm -hmm. narrower and um, we would still have some parking available but there was a, a, a feeling of those that are really um, really understand how these things work that that because of the narrowness of that that turning lane or what isn't really a turning lane mm -hmm. at this point even that would be a problem so we did try and explore some alternatives to you know keep some kind of parking but it just it didn't work Council LaBarge and then Councilor Adams. Thank you. Um, I think this is the right way to go for a long time, and I know Councilor Carney, we've heard it from people about the difficulties with that one lane and people trying to make a right and they cannot. But I do have concerns for the business owners, and I am going to agree with Councilor Carney that I think business owners should be involved 
on any type of parking that is going to be taken away. But I am going to support this because I think that area really needs a change. Councilor Adams. Um, Someone can answer this. Um, there, the long, there's a long-term intended change to the intersection. When's that supposed to take place? I don't know the exact time frame. Then I'm, then I'm curious as to why would we be doing this now, and they'd be losing those spaces for a long period of, for X amount of time to potential people visiting those businesses, and we don't even know when the plan's going to be. I mean, what if we waited? Maybe we could have a, a plan to replace those spots when we take them away. If we put this off to closer to the plan, it just so, so why would we be doing it now? I, uh, yeah, I'm I'm happy to. I mean. This is on first reading. I'm happy to fish out that, that information for you and get it to you by, by second reading uh, at, at a minimum. Um, I wish the director um, were here who would know the exact time frame. Um, if moving these parking spaces now in, increases traffic flow now. Um, and so that would be a reason for doing it, starting the process. But again, I'm happy to find out the exact time frame. Uh, for historical context purposes, the um, it was about 12 years ago there was a proposal to actually make State Street one way at that point mm -hmm. uh, with considerable resistance from the businesses down on that end of the street who were objecting although it would have provided parking uh, deep parking on both sides um, but at the same time they felt that it would deny them drive-by traffic that would benefit their businesses although and 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 that was never particularly qualified it was it was kind of a talk about emotional that was emotional expression it doesn't necessarily wasn't reflected by any supportive statistics but and this problem has been existential for some time uh, that intersection is a failed intersection has been a failed intersection for decades and there's also one of the considerations that has to be held here is pedestrian safety there's a lot of pedestrian traffic there's some real genuine confusion as to when's the safe time to cross and then sometimes people default to just run and that's clearly not something we want to promote we want to promote a safe intersection for pedestrian traffic bike traffic and uh, also to expedite and reduce frustrations that are being experienced there every day there are people there are losing two to three light cycles and by the time they get up to that one intersection point they are not necessarily receptive to anybody never mind pedestrians so I, I i think you know psychologically this actually does create a a, a short-term solution if if impermanent but a short-term solution to an existing problem councilor shara um to that point i'm a little bit concerned that this could have the opposite effect if if people can more readily take a right on red there it might be harder for pedestrians to cross there is a dedicated pedestrian cross light there, although you're right. I'm not sure that everyone necessarily recognizes the state law that requires them to stop and yield to pedestrians. Right. And yeah, that's a concern, I think. I think they have to have a green arrow there to take a right. right. Um, there is, I don't think there's a green arrow for a right turn there. Okay. And, there, and, there, and there's no sign that says no right turn on red? I mean, that's essentially what you're promoting is actually a right We're trying to move that channel that right. traffic yeah. out. Right, so you'll see green there. It's like yeah. queuing up. Because I know, I know the green there is good for about three and a half cars. Right. That's one of the reasons it backs up so much is that's the shortest green in that intersection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know the money for that, actually redoing that intersection, was in the transportation okay. bond bill, I think, that got passed. So the money is around for it. That doesn't mean the design's going to get done really mm -hmm. quickly. And I think it might help, you know, the, we created a complete nightmare the other day with those other way coming up South Street with those big yellow things that are there. And I don't think there's anything to support that other than the mayor said stick them there. Um, I know when I asked Corinne, she said, well, we're waiting for our millionth call before we get those things out of there. Um, this would be nice at least to help one direction at that intersection. And an added benefit is something that Councilor Sherrod mentioned, which is people cut through that church parking yeah. lot. We could reduce that. That's unsafe. It's the problem with the intersection of church and state. Oh, um, oh! Um, you were waiting for that, were you? Oh, yeah. oh, I wrote that down. <laughs> wow. Just but that would be an additional. Shorts <laughs> ready. <laughs> Just one more, one more point of information about the business. I mean, we're, we're talking about the the large business directly across from those three spots is um, Fly By Night, mm -hmm. and there are, and it has its own parking lot 
right here. I mean, I'm looking at the, you know, the, when you pull in Button Lane, there are eight spots. I'm not sure if they're all devoted to fly-by-night, but there is dedicated parking for that business that takes up the major, well, the entirety of the space that would be across the street from those particular spots. Not to say that State Street, with its own parking lot in the back, or others, I wouldn't also be impacted. I understand that, but um, I'm, you know, I'm less concerned about the loss there to those businesses, with the knowledge that uh, a couple of those big ones, State Street and the Fly By Night, do have dedicated parking and parking lots. I would say, in, I mean, in addition to the businesses, I know that the downtown churches, like. Edwards and First Churches mm -hmm. really, really struggle with parking on Sundays. So, mm -hmm. yes, it's only once a week, um, although they do have, there are many events that happen in both those buildings mm -hmm. all through the week, but it's another concern. Mm -hmm. Councilor Klein. Did they not have an agreement with the Catholic Church for that t for the use of that spot? I don't know the status of that. Um, I just want to say to Councilor O'Donnell that you should be able to make a pun around Button Street, too, because <laughs> that's pretty precious. <laughs> Think about that one. If, if we're actually soliciting funds, I suspect that we may have ended the debate. <laughs> uh, Councilor Adams. Um, I'll support on this reading, but I, I, if possible, I would like to know um, why we're taking these now and the plans so far in the future. And um, if we, if we, uh, and if we move the spots closer to the time of the actual project. Um, maybe we could have a replacement parking by then, and B, we'd be helping the businesses and, and the churches up until that point. So, I'll support on this reading, but I really like the answers to those by next reading. But I'm not sure if I can support it without those answers to those. Thank you. I'm happy to find Thank as much you. information as I can. I appreciate that. So this is first reading, uh, and this is for the elimination of those spaces, uh, and. Uh, is there any further discussion on this? Um, can you do the roll? Uh, yes. 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 We probably could have saved some time if we moved these two together. <laughs> uh, this is this is upon the recommendation of transportation parking. Uh, this is uh, essentially the on metered, uh, the, the on street metered parking that exists that we just eliminated, and this is to call for the elimination of those meters. Uh, and this is starting at uh, the location on uh, State Street, westerly side, uh, point 216 feet northerly from Elm Street to northerly to the point of 346 feet from Elm Street. So moved. Any discussion on this? Uh, Councilor Scherer. So um, I will support this as I just supported the other one on the first reading, but also if you could please look into whether there's any um, any thought that's been put into, put in, has been put into how the impact that having more rights on that road is going to have on, um, on, pedestri on the ability for pedestrians to cross right there. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Okay. Thanks. Uh, any other discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Lubar. Yes. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Scherer. Yes. <laughs> got, got them all. There's a request on number six here uh, to be tabled indefinitely. Mm -hmm. um, Who's this request from? Do you know? Claims. On claims, some so Mary, uh, this is this. Uh, sorry, can, I, can I can I speak to this strange little ordinance? Because um, it it went through ordinance twice. Uh, this do we have to put it still put it on the floor even to have the uh, mm. I'll move it for You'll, sake of okay. sake okay. of discussion. Is a discussion is a second. Okay. Decide to table it. Okay. So this this basically deals with seven days last fall late October, early November, when the parking thing broke at the parking garage. Right, and so a, I think a flat fee was set for seven days till the parts came in. Uh, and this deals with 
offering a mechanism for people to potentially get a refund for seven for that seven day period and it came out of well it, it came primarily from the chair of transportation and parking without the endorsement of transportation and parking and it went to ordinance uh, and ordinance sent it back in March to T transportation and parking to say you, you didn't endorse this last time it just came from the chair do you want to endorse it and they sent it back to ordinance saying no we don't want to endorse it so ordinance sent it back here with a negative recommendation as did transportation and parking so what I might recommend is we vote no and make it go away so it gets so, out of the so there is not a Information. Well, I mean, There's not a request to table it. You then? moved it on the floor. It's not moved a, it on the floor. It's on the floor. So I'd like to request if we vote no in first reading, okay. it goes away. Councilor okay. Adams. But uh, uh, correct me if I understand this. It what it does in, in the first clause is uh, it, if someone wants to challenge a, a, a fee, they can present it to the city solicitor. And some of it certainly is geared at you know this limited period of time um, where there was a change in parking rates by the mayor but isn't there more of a policy to it than just that I I, I think I don't think it's just for that period of time and, and, and for no other reason I, th I think what the ordinance does is it, it, is it creates a, um, a mechanism for bringing um, claims claims to the solicitor so and and it, and it takes into consideration what happened last fall as well. So I, don't, I so I'm not sure if the characterization is entirely accurate, saying that it just has to do with that and nothing else. Well, then I would recommend actually redrafting it so that it's more generic and less specific on one particular incident, because uh, that you're right. That incident is in the language. It's incorporated in the language. It maybe excise that and. Uh, um, present it as as a general order that would. would be applicable at all times, not just to this. Uh, Councilor Adams, at least at this point, and Councilor Klein. I understand what the former Councilor was trying to do, was that he saw that there is a, um, if, if there was a dilemma to his policy with respect to that period of time. And that's why he drafted it in there this way, right. and um, and wanted to codify that particular period of time in the ordinance. So I, um, I'm not sure if it would make sense to, I mean, it's, the likelihood that someone would challenge that from at this point from that period of time is nothing but but um i mean we could strike that part of it um but it's actually it, i do think it is there for a reason but those are my comments uh concert Klein. it's my understanding that the city does have a claims process if yeah. somebody mm -hmm. um has a problem with uh, being charged for Thank parking yeah. um a parking violation so uh, i'm not sure that um, removing that particular clause is going to be useful because we're going to be passing a new ordinance for something that we already have in place. Um, so I, I don't see this as a relevant piece of legislation myself. Uh, Councilor O'Donnell. Um, I would just say that to the extent this is about more than the period between Halloween 2012 and November 6, excuse me, 2013 and November 6, 2013. What it essentially says is if you want to present a claim to the solicitor and you were never given a receipt, you may do so. And to me, that, that speaks to President Dwight's point about if we're going to have more general language, we should rewrite this substantially because to me, that just muddies um, the existing claims process, which, about which I don't claim to be an expert. It seems like that would be the only function of this ordinance is remove the receipt requirement. To me, it's problematic. Uh, Councilor Murphy, Councilor Carney, Councilor Specter, <laughs> Councilor Adams. Oh, uh, I, and okay. Councilor Sheriff. Mm -hmm. this, this was written clearly to deal with a very specific situation um, back in the fall, and I understand the reasoning. I also understand that this was taken up by transportation and parking. Um, first, when it first came in the sense that it I don't even think got a second to, to become as a recommended recommended at all from that committee, but also that when it was referred back from ordinance to that committee, the, the discussion at that body was then to send it with a negative recommendation, meaning let's, let's not deal with this particular thing at all, meaning let's vote it down. And um, my sense is I, I, I prefer 
um, eliminating or you know dismissing this particular uh, order and then if a counselor if counselor Adams or anyone else would like to present a new one then I think that it, it would be it would be cleaner mm -hmm. it wouldn't be connected with it than rather to try to wordsmith this particular um, order that would be my preference in this matter. Councilor um, Murphy and then Councilor and I would I would second that this is a, a strange little ordinance that uh, I'd like us to do away with and then if we wish to craft one more specific you know to the issue your counselor Adams was talking about we do but this clearly doesn't accomplish that and this should go away and we should start over I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just said by both both counselors. did the solicitor apply on this at ordinance any of the times it was there no so we don't really know I mean mm. I don't know if it interferes with the claims process or, or conflicts with it. I mean, it seems like it may, but. Uh, uh, Councilor Labarge, you, you have yes. not spoken on this issue and then yes. Councilor Labarge. I have to agree with some of my colleagues. Um, it's gone through the process. The recommendations were no on the recommendations. I think that we should dismiss it and whoever wants to go ahead and, and redesign another ordinance, then that should be put in place. Councilor Labarge. I just note for record there was a kind of companion ordinance that went with right. this that had to do with um, should this happen again if there's a machine failure in the garage. And I think we did have a productive discussion on that and amended it and passed it. And I think that was most of the issue. The, I think the claims thing, you know, I, it might be interesting to, to look at that in detail and write a new ordinance. I, because, I mean, it, well, one of, the, one of my concerns here is that we did create an ordinance that almost rendered this moot because this was a reaction to the absence of a, a regulation that Councilor Freeman Daniels challenged the mayor's authority, which he has since drafted language and now granted the authority that there was no right. line, there was no productive or rational way of filing for a claim because point in fact, he held that the mayor had violated the rules of the law and that it was part of the incentive for creating this. So I'm, my concern is that now that might be Again, a little, a little mushy. Then to make this a little mushy, and Councilor Adams. Um, did that ordinance pass? Yes. Yeah. It did. In fact, actually, it was one of the, it was one of the first things we did, new business uh, as we started our session. And just, sir, there are no expectations. I'm not rewriting this. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> you are. Yes, you are. I know. I know. Councilor Adams to really spend easy. hours. We spent 40 this. minutes on this. You're yeah. gonna <laughs> I knew he wouldn't. <laughs> well, the, the, the questions we made. We talked about it longer. I think we've got a sense. The, that. the motions are made and put on the floor. If it fails here, then it is available to, of course, be reconsidered. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I would ask a roll call on the motion, please. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Council Friday. No. 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 Councilor Obama? No. Councilor Chair? No. Councilor Speck? No. Motion fails. Um, and I will send my personal regrets to Councilor Freeman. <laughs> <laughs> a long explanation for him. Um, and I, and I believe that may be the last legislation from Councilor Freeman Daniels <laughs> that we will be addressing as, as a council. And that, that, that's actually, I'm somewhat wistful. Never say uh, the last. <laughs> um, we're up to item number seven. This is to amend 312-82 uh, uh, crossing roadways. And this is for referral to ordinance. And I'll accept a motion to that effect. I move to refer. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor of referral, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, this is also for referral. This is uh, to amend 350-3.4. That's to rezone all city conservation land to farm forests and rivers, FFR, that is not already FFR or special conservancy. And this is to refer to the planning uh, the Planning Board, the Committee on Economic and Community Development, Housing and Land Use, and the Committee on Rules, Orders, and Appointments and Ordinances. So there a motion to refer? Second. All the, uh, any discussion on referral? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Now we're up to that magical moment where I share with you. <laughs> oh, no. Uh oh. And. I'm not voting to extend the meeting. Well, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> All right. Just in case. Noted. Um, as you know, Pam has now uh, assumed the duties of as secretary, but in a different capacity. She is also, she is the very able assistant city clerk. But as such, that it's incumbent upon us to do what we were supposed to do in the beginning in all our subcommittees. And that is members take notes and do the scribing. Because we, we will end up burning out Pam in two weeks, and I can't afford it. Not emotionally, I can't go through that. So Pam will continue to take the minutes for ordinance. Um, and uh, Councilor Adams. Well, can, can you just explain why the change in structure and personnel means that we no longer have, we're losing people taking, our, uh, someone taking our minutes? Yeah, it, because essentially the, the position's been reduced to essentially a 20 hour job that's dedicated to us that no longer is split between licensing and, uh, uh, and, and council. Now, Pam is the assistant city clerk. The, the position reverts back to the clerk's office, which is where it originally started. And her duty, she has to share those duties. And right now, and, and actually, the office is a little shorthanded until such time somebody is hired to uh, offset some of those hours that are dedicated to our project. And in the end, this is I mean, this the change where Mary was taking all these minutes actually was a slow accretion of responsibilities that weren't originally in her job description. They weren't originally in the job description that they had to take minutes. In fact, it was always in our rules that we had to do our own minutes with, with few exceptions. And so, but Mary started to assume them in, particularly in transportation parking where we got, where things got really complicated and it was, and, and I think that <laughs> there's some veterans here who still look a little, Shell shocked <laughs> from, but it, it is. I think it's incumbent upon us. First of all, there's two things that I want to do here. One is to formalize minute taking so that all minutes look similar in a similar template and follow along the agenda. I mean, we've we've historically strayed from agendas, and we've historically some people keep copious notes and some people keep uh, very sparse notes. But we are trying to make use of the video recordings, which by my reckoning have some substantial improvements needed. To make. Why is there a need for both then? Right. I mean, why should the that state, be? The state requires that minutes be uh, written, but video logs will count as the more comprehensive minutes, but the but we still are required to take written minutes. And Councilor Adams. That's a, that's a requirement. We still, we, but we do still need written witness. Yes. You have to, you have to, you have to represent the votes, the motions. Those all have to be um, written. Um, you don't have to. You, you you can give the color to the debate. But you don't have to describe each give and take in each transaction. Color. It, there, there. So there's. We're now going to be. There, there was a job, taking minutes in the various committees done. For a period of time, and that's no longer done now, so. Where does that savings go to? Well, that, that point, in fact, actually, I don't know if that was, it was actually a documented savings in that Mary was granted flex time to offset her time when she had to go do these night meetings. But as I said, these were not, it was not part of the original job description, and we, we really we took advantage of that. And so this is to go back to what it should have been and has been, and it's part of, it's what Pam signed up for. In point of fact, it's what Mary signed up for when she was originally hired, but we we prevailed upon her generosity, I will say. But the fact is, is that it, it's not it, it wasn't part of the job description. Uh, so, just to be clear, we're not talking about all the committee. Many of the committees are already taking their notes. For, right. For years, That's we took correct. them in appointment in in um, the joint committee uh, with DPW. That's done by a DPW member in the Energy Commission, somebody else from the committee is taking those notes. So we're really only talking about a couple of committees. My guess would be two or three that we're changing this on. Well, public safety would be one public example. Public safety is one because ordinance is going to continue. Well, and believe it or not, we can actually, I think, prevail upon Mary, who is now a member of a department that is part of the public safety, to take the minutes for that meeting. And may I, <laughs> on that same <laughs> subject, 
I, um, when I first uh, joined the Public Safety Committee, and Councilor Murphy remembers this too, um, it, it was staff, the minutes were always taken, not by the police department, but by the secretary yeah, of the fire yes. department. Yeah. So in many of our committees were staffed by city staff, departmental staff, um, Ed Lou, I think Carol Fish typically, or, or Terry Anderson, somebody from the mayor's office took those minutes. Um, but public safety was staffed by someone who came from fire at that time. Right. If it can be prepa prevailed upon one of the other public safety departments, police, or, right. that would be and helpful, or it'll fall on one of the other counselors. still allowed and possible, because <laughs> some of these committees that are, can be staffed. Um, it's just that there is no, there's no line item or budget uh, item. For along, that. along those same lines, some of it had to do with the timing of our committees. When I joined the Public Safety Committee at that time, it was during regular staff hours. We used to have our committee at 4 p.m. And since we're, we're a committee that could still consider and change that time to be more accommodating to city staff if it meant it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think if we know there's some flexibility around there. I don't know about social services. Right, well, that's, that's, my, that's my request. And it's actually for lack of a better term, and I don't have this authority, but that's my edict, that uh, we, we uh, that, that in the interest, as I said, of keeping, keeping Pam here for a reasonable time and without, and without putting added stresses on the clerk's office, that we start doing our own minutes when it's pot, when, when staff is not available. He's going. He's going. Council of the Barge. Oh, thank you. Um, that's all I know is on social services and veterans affairs. We've been doing them for a long time. And I did email um, attorney Alan Seewald on do we have a choice, videoing or minutes? Definitely the minutes have to be done, he said. There's no question about that. Um, I just have great concerns, and I know, Counselor Dwight, that you had made out a form on doing the minutes, which I think is excellent. I also gave it to the Commission on Disabilities of shortening up the minutes because some of the minutes are like a biography right. and there's no reasons for it, you know? Right. And I like what you presented and I think all counselors should follow that. Shorten them up. I have an update from committee chair. I think I oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's, that's fine. Is it? It, so anyone, everyone okay with this? This, this we have no choice. Do we? Autocratic. <laughs> <laughs> we have no choice. I think the council president should <laughs> take notes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I suspect the council president will be, uh, and we will all suffer accordingly. Council I, I think it's a great idea that we have Pam um, being our council clerk, but I have <laughs> concerns because I really can't understand this position. She's the assistant to the clerk. Correct. Plus, she's our council clerk. So what are her hours? I don't get it. What are her hours for us as a council clerk? Well, it, actually, it's, there's I, think, I think it's laid out as around 20 hours. Is that right? It was uh, 20 hours for the, for the Northampton Council, for the city council. So what would those hours be a day? Well, I mean, <laughs> there's none. Well, right? no, I mean, because, in fact, actually, she'll be redoing redundant work. All this stuff that we just voted on, she has to process it not as the secretary, but she will be processing as the, the assistant city clerk. And um, but the fact is, is that that as the position, it's it's a it's a not a full time position. And so she would be doing it in, in addition to her duties. And you're welcome to comment on any of this if you want to. Is she also going to have the same number as the city clerk's number? Or are we going to continuously keep 587-1210? Oh, the phone number. Yes. Fine. Um, you know, as Councilor Dwight had mentioned earlier that there is the plan in place to hire an additional staff person in the office to work 20 hours with the idea that that person would free up some of the responsibilities that I have currently to um, work on council things. Of course, that kind of thing takes a little bit of time. So I would suggest that you'll have access to me anytime that you need me, um, you know, during the course of the day. 
um, as, you know, I mean, things, things do happen, you know. Um, I think if we work together, though, I think, you know, it, it's going to work out. Um, I'm not sure uh, of the specific concerns that you have. You have I do. I have concerns about the number. The telephone number on it because that's strictly the that, we, we city. Can work clerks. on that for sure. Right, but let me finish, please. Because sure. I do have concerns with that, Councilor President. Because why should we be calling the city clerk's office when that's a busy office? If we have a direct phone to you, it goes strictly just to you. Which is fine, but that's you know that's something that has to be reviewed with Lindsay. That's her department, and you know certainly how that gets handled is you know up to Wendy but I do know that my phone for example has the capability to have another phone line right. hooked right okay. into it um, directly so if we wanted to just you know forward the calls to um, another phone line on my phone that it so that would be perfect that, you know, I just feel better about well, I, I also think I should say that I, I want to be conscientious of how what the demands that we put on Pam as as a secretary if there's something that we can resolve ourselves i don't i don't think calling her 10 times a day is going to be productive that. for anybody so i think that it is when the impulse is there just i mean she's going to be fielding phone calls from citizens because usually this is the contact point and that and now the mayor's office is understaffed as well which exactly. used to be a clearinghouse for phone calls as well so i think there's a shakeout period here that so i'm asking everyone to at least be patient and conscientious of of, of the time demands that we're making and and you know fortunately we're coming into a slower period in counseling stuff but um the budget season's coming up and clearly that's going to that's going to demand a lot of effort and energy and time um Right. Um, and sort of giving you a heads up that your agendas are due, you know, um, ahead of time, so that you, um, you know, have that um, taken care of. And also your minutes, if they need to be distributed or whatever the case may be, you know, put on the city's website. Those are still things that you know that I will be able to do for you. Okay. I, you, you haven't been bothering me all that much yet. I'm not sure if that's the way. <laughs> That's intentional or not, but certainly I'm not overworked by the, the amount of things that you've been asking me to do so far. So, I just want. To and, and by the way, the other person that's being trained in the clerk's office will provide backup mm -hmm. that we haven't had for, when for a while. No, for for for, for, for the if Pam is not able to take minutes, then that person will be trained, cross trained to also serve as the council secretary. So that we will have. I mean, you remember what we actually had to schedule around. Mary, um, so, and we uh, will now have some more built-in flexibility, but that's going to take a while too. So, <coughs> so, with, but that's that's the lay of the land as it stands now. We'll see how it pans out. Okay. Just a quick question on on taking minutes. Are there any rules for it, like how how you rotate who takes them, or whether um, chairs? aren't part of that rotation or is there anything that I did there are, there are no strict days. rules although actually part of our rules was that we elect a scribe essentially yeah. that you elect a chair you elect a scribe we have no treasure duty so there's none of that mm. stuff but just I don't think that's in the rules so there, you can rotate um, it doesn't have to be the same person yeah. every well, time and, then, and that would be up to the, each committee I mean it's kind of difficult to put it on the chair because the chair to manage run the meeting and take minutes is it's clearly a little tricky so so uh council of i did the minutes us being a chair for almost four years and council so Dwight. you're skilled at it <laughs> <laughs> so you're skilled at it oh perfect yeah. <laughs> skilled at it oh yeah right <laughs> and even councillor dwight had concerns about it because we had councillors who did not want to do them you know, so it's not just an easy thing scheduling people. It takes time to do that. But I had my share of it. Oh, well, just the point that the council president made about having a template that will make the minute taking very easy and simple. Exactly. Really, even just a way to check off, you know, motions made and whether it was carried, even a checkbox of some sort. And then um, if there's a way that we can understand how to reflect a, a uh, 
discussion that doesn't get into the detail that's already recorded in the yes. uh, video and audio that might make it easier for all of us. Yes and no and that. Well, I appreciate all your thoughts on this and, and your, your cooperation, so. Um, all right, uh, Councilor Adams. Uh, committee update, committee yeah. update, excellent. Just um, to tell the members, we will be meeting Tuesday because tonight we got something that's referred to us. Any other uh, updates from the committee chair? Yeah, Other than the fact that they don't want to take No information requests, no new business. I'll accept the motion to adjourn. Second. Made and seconded. All those in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 Aye.